Kobo Limpopo was still a bit laid back, and you know, life was going on. And Nelly uh, Nelly Lebo are there. Lebo are there. Yes, yes. Patudi was still in. Ah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ever worked with uh, Dr. Patrick Chai? Yes, I worked with him when we were in Soul, Soul City. Okay. Hey, ung heti le mucho ole, but you know what? It was his journey. Yeah. We don't know what he was going through. I'm sorry. King King David Studio Podcast. We have with us um, someone who's described as a, a by by music, a, by rather by producers in, in the movie business as incredible. Uh, some say she's a gift from God. Some say she would do silent movies and they would have the same impact. We have with us, in my world, she's one of the great South Africans. We have with us Clementine Musimani, and I think she's special. How are you, man? King David. <laughs> how are you? I'm blessed and highly favored. Thank wow. you so much. And how are you? I'm, I'm awesome, thank you. I'm awesome. It's been a, a tricky year. However, yeah. we know we soldier on. Yes. And we, we look forward to even better things to come. So I say to you, Kyalabocha, thank you for making the time. I think we were lucky to find your schedule in a moment that's open. <laughs> <laughs> we're very lucky to find that moment. And I'd like to say thank you very much. I'd like to say thank you very much. I'm so blessed for you to have me here, for you to think of me. Mm. I'm really humbled. Thank you. Uh, you know, we've been talking before we started recording and one of the things that immediately crossed my mind about you is your love for God. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am if it wasn't for God. Tell me more about that statement. You know, I, 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 I grew up in a family that loved God from my grandparents, my mother, and I was surrounded by people who loved God. And I remember in 1984 when I got born again, getting to know God more. Mm. Getting to know that God is not just a father, he's not just a parent, but he's also a friend. Yeah, He can be a brother, he can be a sister, but the Bible says he's that guy that sticks more than a friend. Like mm. He actually sticks more than a brother because your brother can turn on you one day. But God is always there. And when I got born again in 1984, I remember when I discovered this awesome God. I was so angry because I was angry because I was angry in church. And I was angry because I was confirmed that I was But you end up not knowing this God. You end up not knowing that I can actually pour out my heart to God and tell mm. God how I feel and tell God that God, I'm actually angry with you mm. and tell God how much I, I love him and tell God, God, you're so awesome. Mm. God, you go before me, you open doors, you mm. close doors, mm. you know, and why didn't I get to know you before? But I got to understand that with God, everything has got its own time. Mm. And you have to be prepared not by yourself, but by him mm. as your creator and your maker. Yeah. Yeah. So uh so the statement when when we plan, God looks at us looks at us and says, Bona fail. No, when we plan, <laughs> God loves it. Yes. But God says, Continue planning, my child, because I have better plans for you and right. greater plans yeah. for you. It's good for you to plan. Mm. You know, like the Sosona ants. Ants plan. They know winter is coming and mm. they start now to gather food and, you know, prepare for the winter. And God loves that. So, Lirona, we have to be smart like ants and prepare for the future. In your preparation, I've got greater plans for you. That's why it always surprises us. When we have what we consider difficult times, uh, the worst possible scenario of your life, because we all hope for a better day tomorrow. We all hope for, for food always on the table. We all hope for when you open the fridge, there's always something to take out, not just me, it's Yabata. Mm. And, and one morning you wake up, it looks like the worst possible uh, situation you can ever find yourself in. And in moments like that, humans find it difficult to think this God who claims to love me so much, why is it that... Has he forsaken me? You find that even in the Bible where they say, 
what happens in those moments and you can't question us as humans where we say oh, I, do you even exist what happens in a in the psychology of humans in moments like that in your experience with your relationship with god I think there comes a time whereby we get into this comfort zone where sometimes we just drift away from God and forget to regana. There are those difficult moments and God loves to allow us to mm. go through those difficult moments because I think God is a God that likes to show off mm. to show you who you know what actually <laughs> your life is dependent on me. Ooh. You do not know your tomorrow. I know your tomorrow better. I know your future better. Mm-hmm. I have traveled with you from your past, from mm-hmm. the time you were born. Where, whatever you have gone through, or when you go through the waters, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. You go through the fires, you will not burn. Through the waters, you will not drown. I am with you. Because God always likes to remind us that, by the way, it's not because I am on television. It's not because I am a radio presenter. It's not because I am popular or, or beautiful. Mm. It is because God is God and mudimu mudimu olerato and God loves us. And he will always remind you that I am your pillar of strength. Wow. I am God, your provider. Hey, uh, we're starting a church. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> starting a church we we call it uh, a clementine <laughs> church of miracles uh, no, 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 no 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 church of miracles no no sabasule no how but the bible says as human beings we are the church mm. especially if we have received jesus christ as our lord and savior so if we are part of the body of christ we are the church and we assemble in the house of the lord or in the synagogue so how olikereke obviously you will always talk about the goodness of god and when you speak and open your mouth people have to hear the presence of god in you because he says i've given you the holy spirit who's supposed to be going with you wherever you go everywhere yeah everywhere. so we are not a church of miracles god himself is a miracle because my waking up today is a miracle on its own That's i don't true. know how i i woke, I woke up I don't know how it came about for me to drop into your mind and heart to have me. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> we don't know where where all of that was was connected, the dots connected yes. and led to this moment. Yes. So all of life is a miracle. Thank you, sir. Yo, yo, yo. Imagine that collection to you. <laughs> <laughs> Connect the dots. <laughs> imagine imagine the ributsi mo ba collect ba Kenya ra di 20 rand. Are it well here. Yeah. <laughs> you were born in Cape Town? No. Tell me about this lie then that we find on the internet about your life. I wasn't born in Cape Town. Okay. My grandmother, my mother's mom, mm. is a Captonian. Not Kwasa speaking, African speaking. No wonder there's so much Africans in your language. Why are you Yes, a little bit more than I thought actually. Yes, yes. So my grandmother was born and bred in Cape Town. She grew up in Cape Town. Part of her German descent descendant and she couldn't speak any African language but surprisingly she got married to her husband her dear loving husband from Limpopo mm. Polokwane okay bakopane guy <laughs> bakopane hona magauteng mo here in Joburg and he was i think he was just a messenger guy working for the transfaller mm. she was a kitchen girl obviously like a good kitchen mm. and she, god always connects the dots he yeah. actually even directs your path wait yeah Take me back though to the stories you've heard about her life in Cape Town. Yeah. Whatever whatever story crosses your mind related to what life was she living uh, in Cape Town? I remember she telling me that they had a farm. They worked on a farm a vineyard actually. And yeah, they would gather those grapes. She actually taught us how to gather the grapes and wow leave them to ferment to make wine. Wine? <laughs> yeah. So she knew the process. <laughs> she knew the process, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then I remember like uh, the, 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 the watermelon, some melons in it, but it's on. Uh, I can't use the word, but that's how they call them. Die Wart the Moon, and they would just make dried or glazed melons out of them glazed figs okay. right figs wow. yeah so that was her life in cape town yeah. until she came to joburg at lobatam sibit looking for a better life mm, yes mm. Do you know, i always wonder about how they traveled my granddad uh, whom i'm named after eh mm. uh, david mashabela yes from uh, Hamashabela in uh, the site yeah jane fest yes yes um 
I always wonder because the story reads that he came out. It's told that he came to Kabul in 1940s. Mm. How in the world did they travel from that far uh, to to Gauteng? Because very bad roads, very little transportation. I always wonder about those journeys. That's what makes you to realize that God has always been there. Even if Nebanaldi Karikit say, even if they had that goods train, whatever train, whatever form of transport they used, God has always been there to direct people and to give people the brains mm. to manufacture and to make things happen. So because le nama maka kwa gatema ke ba pedi ba tswele mpopo ba bolela. So you do have your genetics connect to Limpopo as well. Yes sir. Imagine that. Yeah. It's a true South African with such diverse connections, eh? Yes. <laughs> Now your grandma comes to 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 Johannesburg, finds a job, meets this guy. Musimane utswa kai. Musimane is my father. Yeah. My mother got married to Musimane. My mother is born Tema. And then she got married to Musimani. Mm. Yeah, that's how I became a Musimani. Musimani reads like uh, Batswana, though. Ke Batswana, yes. Hey. Ke Batswana. How do you get a, such a true South African? Hey. So much of of everything. Maba maburu bara se peiki kos. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we are. Potatoes, it's got carrots, it's got green beans, it's got cabbage in it. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I, I I find the journey of South Africans quite fascinating. Yes. Uh, it, it, and you were born in the '60s. Yeah. And it means 1976. You're quite. You're not young. You were conscious. Yeah, I was. You were aware of what was happening. Of course. Yes. Uh, 1976. Yeah. By the way, my mother was a journalist. Whoa! You were even closer to the First story. Black woman journalist, Sophie Tema. Tell me about it. Dear Sophie. Yes. Yes. And um, I remember. As a journalist, the first born go hire my master's to me. Hmm, you don't say this to anybody, but something is cooking. Something is coming. Mm. There's a young man called Tetsi Masini. He unalibo khoso se atlolo boten mutsisi botrofo masono, and she names them. And she says, "Banali meeting every night. Every night, when she knocks off, she has to go." to Morris Isaacson to their meetings where they were going to sit down plan how they were going to carry out the match that took place June 16 mm. 1976 jeez she was the only black woman journalist only journalist that they trusted that they called to say this is the plan we have mm. hence on the 16th of June 1976 She took her driver from Komisebizi in a drive to Samakadi Petrol. By then she was working for the newspaper called The World. Okay. Ne? And then they had a photographer that is Simon Zima. They went to Morris Isaacson very early she left home around about half past six to go and meet them go Morris Isaacson because the match was going to take place from there. And yeah, the match took place. They came when they got to around Shenti before Shenti Mapodisa but that khaga ka di hip on whatever you see the cops were aware of all of this as well they must have found out obviously yeah. you always have got informers and when people see that they'll always pick up the landline maybe by phone and say hey something is happening in the police station and people see and they came and they started firing hmm. shots real ammunition mm-hmm. not rubber bullets yes. they started firing bullets at so we two kids and yeah when hector peterson got hit mm-hmm. i've got two brothers one has already passed on god bless his soul nebatsana skolo go tsogang tsogang the principal was memala khwali so the uniform was green and red exactly like the one hector was wearing, You're wearing yeah. yeah and when my mother saw mbuisa carrying Hector yeah. Peterson and Antoinette crying. That, that, that picture, that, that famous that's, picture. That's, that's Hector's aunt, actually, sister. Oh, yeah. who's running who's alongside. Who's running alongside, yeah. alongside Hector. And the Mamaka Hababona, she gets off from the Beatle, mm-hmm. and she says to the photographer, Obutsem, capture the pictures. Now I'm running by foot. They go into the car. Hector, Bamutsweri, Mbuisa and Antoinette they get to Shenti clinic when my mother arrived there she thought it was one of my brothers mm. because of the uniform and when she got there on arrival unfortunately Hector was certified yeah. dead wow 
the picture that shook the world. It's amazing. Yeah. The picture that shook the world. Your mom was directly involved in it. That who was the caption. Who would have guessed? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the caption. Yeah. Yeah. Let's spend a minute on your mom and how in those days becoming a journalist is not something that happens easily for a black black woman. Mm. Uh, how in the world did she manage to worm her way to such a such a role? My mother when she related to me she never went to to university to go and study because the background ya khakha was very poor mm. but she loved to read and she said she wanted to become a lawyer but her father said to her ngonaka please do not become a lawyer because lawyers they make their money by lying <laughs> and defending some people they're not, not supposed to be defended mm. and she said i didn't know what to do she, she worked for a company as a switchboard operator okay. and she says because she was so fluent and she was so flawed on Afrikaans, Afrikaans because she went to study Afrikaans at <laughs> hey, where <laughs> in the free state really? Kroonpen Kroonpen is a prison today mm, it was yeah. a, what a school it was a school mm. yeah how did she end up there Hey, I don't know opportunities sana ko eo she ended up there mara mm. and then that's where she was studying ka Afrikaans in the medium of Af- Afrikaans mind you not english yes yeah. everything in africa everything in africans Jeez. because it's in the free state yeah of course and she comes back she works at a switchboard operator as a switchboard operator and the owner of the company says to her every time you answer the phone libona haba phone your africans are flawed your english is impeccable mm. Wouldn't you be interested in writing across the street banka finally the journalist is it sang are you okay. good in writing and they took her on that's how that's how it happened when i say god plans has a better plan the future he's got a better plan and that's how she ended up becoming a journalist yeah yeah it's amazing. Yeah. It was a chance more than anything. Exactly. Yeah, it could yeah. have gone any any direction. Any direction. Yeah. Yeah, and then that's how my mom became a journalist and she encouraged me even then to read. Mm. Or always read. Reading is a skill. You must know how to read. We do the full stop go guy, we do the exclamation go guy, we do the comma go guy, we do the question mark go guy. You don't just read without breathing. You must know where to take your breath and yeah. It's a, it's interesting how we we sound like we're talking about events of the 1990s mm-hmm. with this mother who ends up becoming a journalist and these are events of of the 60s yeah this is a long long time ago yeah and it 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 stands out at such a contribution to your life and and it leads to so much that happens in your life as well mm-hmm. but you speak very little of daddy daddy was a photographer okay and that's where they met with my mother Working for the same company. I'm Shell. Yeah, I'm Shell. I want to act all ma, but all ma. No, you are the results of all of this. <laughs> yes, act all ma. No, act all ma. And my father was a very good photographer. Yeah, he would tell his story through taking pictures. Wow. He was not just taking pictures, mm. but his pictures you would tell. I wish he would really tell a story. Yeah, yeah. So I think the industry. That's where I met up with it through my mom and my dad it was instilled in them and part of it was god gave it to me but in an advance mm, mm. medium you, you're a true sowetan right yes sir through and through through and through and and so these parents are in joburg looking for work they find each other photographer journalist and you come about mm. and they were, they were, i imagine they were also living in soweto at of that course. time of course yeah. yes and then this this family starts yes tell me about the family what are what are who are the characters in in this family setting in this family setting i didn't know my grandfather mama 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 but i heard about him i knew my grandmother who was african speaking who grew us up obviously my mother was a journalist so nere sa e crash rona re bana ba kholetseng go gae ke bana ba le ba sa tlhagelang go spetlele ke tlhagetse go gae so what would happen if la re gola mama would take care of us then my my brother was conceived then I have another brother Mudise who passed on Jeez. and then 
um, mama ki journalist, papa ki photographer, papa ka kuri pampering. Their time is on a layer on a, you know, the industry flexible. is flexible. Yes. But most of the time they come home late. Uh. So yeah, we eat sa paka six o'clock, kuko mama, we don't play in the street. Mama is by a kwai. Yo. Yeah, very strict. <laughs> And my mother also, kuhudi na my mother being very strict. And yeah. You, you refer to mama and mama. I yeah. imagine ke ke nkhono le mama. Yeah, yes. we never so called we I never realized. called our oma oma. Neri yes. mitsa mama. mama. That's why Because I realize interesting your tone is different when you refer to them. Yeah. Kona le mama le mama. Le mama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you were aware of this. I wasn't. <laughs> I picked up on it. Kona le mama le mama. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so mama ke oma ona le khudisa because yes. most of the time my mother would do, she would travel go to Bolimpopo go go both case attend going to take stories and whatever 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 yeah lady photographers they, they have to go to capture pictures and mm. whatever because they had to tell stories through pictures mm. yeah and then ridula ko mama 6 o'clock ra tlapa 4 o'clock re se police se di tlhako re tlapile preparing for the supper gore nobody is in the streets so ke khotse ke le ngwana ole o sa tsamekeleng ko strategy that much with no friends in the street no. really no yeah no i know those kids yeah do you know i met someone at university first year 1990 94 she was doing first year i was doing second year second year She, when we found out that I saw this pretty girl, I'm, yes. I want her numbers and so forth. Uh, we find out we live in the same neighborhood for my milord. And I say, how come? She grew up Kujarati. <laughs> so we didn't even know. So exactly the same scenario in your case, I mm. guess. Mm. And, and, and what, what, did that type of life have any influence in the person that you've become? It did. It did because I'm still that kind of person because it taught me to choose between right and wrong. It taught me not to depend on friends. Mm. It taught me that there is a God and I must believe in what God has instilled in me. Believe in yourself. Have confidence because you can easily be influenced by friends and go astray. Mm. So by that life, I grew up knowing what, hey, yeah, mm-hmm. no. Yeah, no. Because I'm going to be careful because I'm going to be careful because I'm going to Yes. We are not going to smoke. We are going to spank you. We are going to spank the devil out of you. What else did they say about the streets though? Because I I know of of scenarios like that where you're told or scared thing this is what happens. What else did they say to you about the streets of Soweto in that context? Besides them saying anything, I would see some of the street kids how they would grow up aratakholwana, some of them loving boys, some mm-hmm. of them even though pregnancy was that that was not that much but ubonorwanuli Hey man, something is not right. Mm. So those kind of things, as I grew up, I had to become a letter of them and be aware of them so that I do not fall into the same trap. Yeah. Because mm. No, no, no. Yeah. So you have to do your home chores. Put everything in order. And my, my Oma, after after kitchen. Oh, yes. So we come back home. Mama took Nanali menu, my granny, my dad. <laughs> Monday, Sunday, Sunday, Kosiki, a roasted chicken, roasted lamp of a uh, leg of lamp, mm. roasted uh, artapos, potatoes, yeah. blom quali, cauliflower, grun <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it sounds like it was. Uh, a good life yeah at that time it was yes it was it was and, and, and by that i mean you know you know we all speak of a uh, journalists like to use these phrases dusty streets of of, of so where to uh, they like to use phrases like uh, grew up in poverty yeah would you have described your life like that you have two working parents and a caring grandma at home would you have described your, your life if you were to be asked very simply was it a difficult poor life would you describe it that way I will say na as much as people around us had went through poverty we were blessed hore we didn't have to experience that but we were taught hore be grateful that you are privileged to have what you have and I like to teach you but we were taught to share mm. and I would see my granny sharing stuff I remember she had a cousin one adula go Crown mines. Okay. Nonali kompo ni ko crown mines. 
I like how we use the phrase "compound." Yeah, it simply means compound. Compound. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. And every end of the month, she would go there, but we'd be there for and she would come back a fishy, and I'm a mill rice, stampa, you name it, rice, mill mill. When she comes back, when I take a bus at four o'clock, and she would tell my uncle, "Love, spend with my mother." Fear ear, he would be the bus stop as yes, want me bus. Mm-hmm. And that, yes. So her, she's heavy loaded, heavy carried, and then one more two. Her feet, we are the packs. For people around her, her neighbors and her friends, by wow. you know, they're struggling. Yeah, they're struggling a bit. And then we saw Mama sharing with other people, and we grew up to understand that life is about sharing. Wow. Yeah. That's a big lesson. Yes. It's it, it's an important one, particularly today where we have such high walls. Yeah. Uh, both in the townships now, where our walls are high to a point where you don't know these neighbors, you don't care to know them. And and you grew up in an environment where there was a lot of sharing. Yes. That must have left, a, a, as you put it, a lasting impression in you. It it has, because even today, I do have around my area. Especially with what we went through, got this COVID-19 issue, finding where people do not have enough. And they would come and knock on my door, Asina. And because I still have yeah. that vivid memory in my mind i can't say i do not have and besides that because my granny was also very grounded when it comes to the word and when it comes to god Mm. the bible says you cannot turn somebody away if you have so when they come and they knock i open my cupboards i open my fridge i give whatever i have and i share with them and it really leaves a good feeling with mm. inuri. I'm not the only one who goes to bed having eaten. At least somebody is going to bed having eaten something. It's something. Yes. You know the story of the the fish and the when the multiplication yes. of fish and bread. Yes. Uh, they say it, you'll be surprised at how much you have in your cupboard. Yeah. You notice it when when somebody comes through who has nothing at all. Yeah. Uh, and they ask for anything. Yes. And when you when you think you don't have much, but the minute you open your cupboards, you realize yeah. that there's actually so much. There's an overflow. There's exactly. an abundance. Yeah. Yes. It's something that we we don't realize it when we are living in our own, uh, you know, disconnectedness with others until they come and say, uh, "Do you have bread?" Mm. You all along thought you didn't have enough. Yeah. And then you open it, you realize actually this is way more than you can you can eat. Yes. That's why you share it. Exactly. It's an amazing one. Your your your, your grandma's Africans has stayed with you. Uh, did she ever learn language school education? I imagine she did, or she didn't care to know. Hey, na li tohwe tata koko le, na li tohwe tata. And funny enough, she refused to go and stay in a color township. About she said that ulo na ko Orlando East. Yeah. Arnia akaswart. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, and then I do not do like Orlando. My mama goes ni yena kaswarta alpra. I pull Africa. She never learned. She never <laughs> <laughs> I, it was just difficult. Le papa na 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 tala meti ab ab ati di di fell and then afakhe ni mama papa body so ko kuok until she learned how to speak <laughs> porridge. You, you know, the reason why that that comes to mind is because had she learned. A, a township, Setswana, Sepedi, Zulu, whatever language that's spoken, uh, you wouldn't have had so much Africans in the house. So I guess that worked to your favor. Yes, it did work to my favor. Yeah. Exactly, it did. Because then it, it was around all this time. Uh, this African speaking lady uh, who always calls you in Afrikaans, always asks you for something in Afrikaans, and you have to respond in Afrikaans as well. And amazingly enough, even the society around us. Never meet us on Maselu Masali Prat Africans. Yeah, that's Even it. if they speak broken Africans, but still they embraced her, they loved her. Munaka Nablela Spedi, my grandfather apparently Nablela Spedi. Her in laws, Nablela Spedi. How about Lila Babela Spedi? And how about Jolim Popo Batobela and Ababela African Sela? They find Spedi, they must find it. Maguana. Yeah. They find Africans somewhere. Exactly. That's incredible. Yeah. Because I I look at how, and I'm going to fast forward very quickly to 2020 when a movie uh, Poppy launched yes and and you're the main character yes. your face is the biggest on the poster yes sir. and it's a it's a, it's a character that that speaks Africans yeah. largely mm. uh, because you're a domestic worker for an African family mm. and and I look at a movie like that and I say it's amazing again we go back to the planning how you couldn't have planned that 
however many years ago, 40, 50 years ago later, here you are, a uh, 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 Aus Clementine gets a role to speak Afrikaans and you embrace it. You're the perfect character for this. You're probably the only person available to do it well. To speak Afrikaans is toss out no wins. You know, we are far. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> and there you are. <laughs> when you look at moments like that in life, what comes to mind about the connectedness of, of, of the dots that we've spoken about so much already? You know, I believe Hore Mudimu cut us out for a reason. We are cut out. Yeah. We are just not made. Mudimu takes time to create us and he knows your future from the instant God creates you. He knows your journey, what you're going to go through in life. I don't know my journey, mm -hmm. but he knows my journey. He knows the hurdles I'm going to jump. He knows where I'm going to fall, where he's going to pick me up. God knows everything. So even if I had my granny, remember even when I got into the industry, the industry was Africans dominated. So we're in the 70s. Yeah. yeah. SA, even in the 80s, SABC mm. was run by Africaners. Of course. So it was, it was Africans dominated. Africans And the minute you speak Africans, doors open. Mm, a you little know, easier. A little easier is a favor. And for me, when I realized that I was or I'm multi lingual, yeah. It was an advantage for me. I'm getting so many jobs because of the love of languages. Mm. And also the love of languages, what it does, it humbles you to embrace other people of other races. Of course. Yeah. In the, the words of uh, a former South African president that I speak to someone in a language they know, yes, you speak to their to their head, but speak to someone in their language. You speak to their you soul. speak to their soul. Yes, it's such an important thing. It's very important. Yeah, yeah. Your schooling. Where did you go to school? My, 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 my dad's mom was a lady teacher. Okay. She took me to school till four years old. Aru, yari. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I went to Zohang. From Zohang, I went to Leradong Higher Primary. From Leradong, we went to Selekel. I went to Rayo City Toma. Mm. Then at some point, I tried to go to Limpopo to go and learn there, but yeah, it didn't work out. In what was the thinking there? To get away? Uh, Thinking, so we to Nelly did I would say, Gobo Limpopo, they were still a bit laid back, and you know, life was going on. And Nelly Le Nelly Leboa then, Leboa then, yes, yes, but we were still in, ha. 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 Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, and 1987, I came back, and then yeah. 88 things became better in Soweto and then I continued to school in Soweto because by then yes yeah. everywhere you can't run away you can't run away yeah you can't run away, you can't run away. Yeah. You can't run away. and then it gave a kids and I go Lufense girls Lufense okay I have a very different perception of girls who goes to a girl's school because <laughs> there are no boys around them it's they always fun. wonder <laughs> It's fun. <laughs> Tell me about that fun. A, a girls' school, everything is normal. You don't even think about the boys. Wow, okay. Nothing is there about the boys, except when you go to athletics time, music time, yes. and that's it, get a competition, and that's it. Otherwise, life is as normal. Normal as, as it can be. As it can be. Yes. You don't miss us. <laughs> a little cook, you, know? really cook. you are a bit of a distraction <laughs> <laughs> from when to when you were doing it in high school yes this, in high this, school this. yes okay yeah and 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 influence what influ what influences were you having around you um and not necessarily for the career that you ended up taking on but just what influences were were, were ringing in, in 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 your environment at the time oh, it's, there was music there yeah. was basketball okay. there was cooking lessons there was so much and also because it was just the beginning of television gabo 80 late 80 eight, no no early 80s eight, early, 80s. early 80s so you also had the influence of television whereby you would get um glued to television mm. and i remember how I got to get into this industry that influenced me, it was because we only had TV One. Yes, only one channel. And then as they were preparing to go for TV Two, mm. not TV Three. I know. TV Two. They took TV long. TV they took yeah. time. Yeah, it took time. <laughs> yes. Then TV Two had to share Nguni and Sutu languages, yeah. right? Mm. Then 
there came a time whereby as they were scouting ba tsantsane ba ira bo di music uh, programs bo di arora bo lapologa and then they started saying okay they're going to have magazine programs and then i remember there was a guy by the name of William Walker and Sam Mufulo they used to work for a company called Trillion ba ba rona wena wouldn't you like to audition there's a magazine program coming television was new to me what did they see in you though <laughs> I don't know. Well, so good. Maybe in the Yes. Yeah. And I said, yeah, okay. And Nekibala Sotu go school. My home language, I said, okay. it's Sotu. And then we went there and they just told me it's going to be in Sotu. Mm. And understand, SABC had an influence of people who were teachers before. Of course. Yeah. So they took pride in their languages. Yeah. So I had to go and audition Kase Soto. Hmm. Ne? Yes, and, and fortunately you could speak it well. Yes. Yeah. And the name of the program was called Tsabacha. Okay. And Tsabacha because it was a magazine program, it had all people of all walks of life. Of teachers, doctors, priests, you name them. And I fell in love with that because on the other hand it was educating not only the viewers, the listeners only Also, also me. yourself. And I fell in love because I wanted to become a doctor. Like you play okay. like a doctor. <laughs> But as I say, Mudimu cuts us out for certain things. And there I found myself still in school, recording Saturdays and Sundays for hmm. SABC. Okay. <laughs> what, 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 what role were you playing? The presenter or you had a segment? What was it? Uh, I was the main presenter, the anchor of the show. Yes. So you were a child star, as they say. You started very, very young. And to think about it, when I think back, I didn't even start there. I remember there was a furniture shop called Ellerins. Mm-hmm. Ellerins in Itonakuri, it was Ellerins, and then Sales House was developed after Ellerins. Ellerins, yes. Never had the magazines in the day every month, and they had the debate. Floor, yeah. Yeah. They get advertised Was, yeah, could you see in the front page of Ellerins <laughs> holding a tennis ball? What? Yes. So I know influencers are calm. Influencers are neat. The original. Uh, yeah. Clementine Simon, the original influencer. You know, I, said, I was sitting the other day thinking back, and I remember in 1977, United Nations came to South Africa. Yeah. And they wanted a young black girl to come and talk to the United Nations to tell them what is it like to be a young child in South Africa. I happened to be their child. What? Go so way to amphitheater. Where did they find you? How did they say she's the one? You know, you know the qu- question that crosses my mind in line with what I've just said. What kind of person were you in 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 high school? And 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 I think the answer is is in what you're about to tell us. How did they find you of so many other kids? Because of my mother being a journalist, I think somebody spoke to her and she said, "You yeah, have got a daughter who's 12 years old. She can go, go and speak." <laughs> Pressure. Clearly she had confidence in Clearly she had confidence in me. And looking back I was like these were the stepping stones. Yeah. Of going into this industry, God was already preparing. You had already prepared the way, even though it was gradually, because it was Ellerins, United Nations, yes. then Tabacha. They're you know, going in that. Yeah. Why born at it? Yes. Lao sai boni. Lao sai boni. Can I go lao sai boni? Yes. Yes. But because Mudimu has always got an aim, Kabo Peloba. When you look back, it's like. Wow, you've long started with me, boss. Nigga say away. Nigga say away. That's amazing. Yes. Would you say uh, you know because people who end up in those positions and and we made reference to this ba papanyana or you know all of that. Did you have a little bit of that personality about you? Because there's nothing wrong low papa for that. No, you are a child. You yes. have to go through those channels Absolutely. as a child. U papa, u besto. I was not here at all come to. Let's say hey, yeah. So you did all of that. I did all of that. I was a kid. So I enjoyed being a kid. Do you think you stood out from the rest or you were because I think I just blended in. There was nothing particularly special about me. Do you think Exactly. You I didn't stay I same. Yeah. You blend with other kids. You blend with them and yeah. Hence you beca- you have friends that go skolong and then as life goes as you grow you outgrow some people you outgrow yeah. some things and you find yourself at a certain spot. Hmm. Any friend that that you remember? 
in that time. I still have got my school friend with me. She's still my no friend Kaje Kokhopotso. No way. Yes. For, what? For years now. Yeah, she's still my friend even today. That's amazing. Yeah. And 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 the friendship started high school, the girls school. No. Primary. <laughs> That's Go even further. That's even further down. Yeah. And you remain as anga lalonyana. No. But like some much. She's a very soft spoken person, very polite. Very gentle. Yeah, very gentle. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. can, and and clearly that that that's the type of support that you've had for so long. Yeah. So she knows everything. She knows everything. I have another one, CD Makoti. She's also a friend, even though we don't speak now and then. She just recently lost her brother, mm -hmm. but we do speak on uh, mm. WhatsApp. Yeah. Eliana, from back then, mm. what value have you found in? in these type of relationships. I say this because, you know, you've become this famous actress uh, with a career that's very different from the average uh, person. You know, people go to work, do normal jobs. And Honale, this famous friend that we all have, Ramona TV in a movie and so forth. Uh, what do you find this, the value from friendships that are that old? What do you find about them? What I find about them, I find there's a lot of humbleness. Mm. There's a lot of genuineness. Yeah. Because when you look back, things have changed. People are not as genuine today as they used to be. So with us, can you imagine this from this girl's school? Some of us are from primary and we are like sisters mm. because your parents knew me, my parents knew you. And we are like family and we grow up with that respect. We grow up with that love. Even if Rafita six months a year, hey, Eriki Lobo, not city one day. Exactly. That thing is there. You know, we love each other genuinely. Yes. And uh, we have respect. There's no pretense. Each other. No, there's no there's pretense. There's no about the TV it. star. No, no. Not no, at all. No. Yeah. No, you can't be a TV star. <laughs> you can't be a TV star. If you have to live with people, you can't be a star. You have to come down, by the way, to come and drink water. Mm. You have to come down to come and get bread. <laughs> From the yeah, ground. So I can't be a TV star. <laughs> no. I break you. That's interesting how those friendships, and because I, I always make reference to the type of friends I have. My true genuine friends are those I grew up with, literally yeah. from since we were kids. Yeah. And they're still around in my life the same way. Yeah. And I, I find more value in them than I do in friends you met three years ago. Yeah. You know, that, and there's nothing wrong with the friends you met three years ago, but there's still a lot more to find from those old friends. Yeah, there's that substance, the, the, the groundedness. You know, yeah. but no, it's like, <laughs> are you in my life or something uh oh oh <laughs> or yeah I don't know yeah or you just want to rub shoulders mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you never know mm -hmm. you never know mm -hmm. but you can sense where it is, the genuineness is not like it's not genuine the friendship is not genuine you know something that, that crosses my mind when I when I read your life story and the characters that you've played <laughs> They sound, they, they are so diverse. Yes. So there's a lot of people inside this one person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want to know about moving from, moving from uh, this young, this show, yeah, this, this where you're acting now, not no, presenting. What happens next in your, in your life, both academically and, and in terms of your TV life? What happens next? Kikos Kolom, by the way. Yeah. Saturday, Sunday, CK recorder. Yes. During the week, I go to school. That thing here, what about doctor? Oh no. Goes out the window. 1984 comes. Hey. this God, this creator. <laughs> <laughs> one proposer. Uh -huh. We don't are, are, we have not chosen him. Are, I have chosen you. Yeah. I have picked you. Mm. I have loved you before you could love me. And he proposes me and I fall in love with this guy. And yo, it's not easy. There are challenges. I'm still young. Mm. Yeah, I'm young. Kisa mali chomita ka babangba nwa ning ning lirunar batlau taste. You know, it's life. Why why ni neling neling kana go kapenheimer? Yeah, libo automavel. Automavel. 
I know the mutu well. <laughs> exactly what you tasted. Because you know, I tasted it too. I yeah, didn't like it. I yeah, no, you know, and you like, mm, yeah, okay, sharp. And yeah, sometimes Baba might to do too. But, mm. uh, and it's life. You go through it. and But that's where you have to make a decisive decision. Or who am I? Mm. Where am I going to? And now he proposes to get this person. Oh, you know what? I have to reach the word of God. I have to pray. I have to ask for direction. And yeah, my life gradually becomes grounded, rooted, disciplined. But some of the challenges, mm-hmm. and then and what I love about God is that it doesn't matter what you do; He remains loving you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You can go mess up. Yeah, it's okay. And it because I have redeemed you, mm. you are still mine. Hmm. And I go on with life. Yeah. Let's let's clarify, Hoshela, so everyone understands it. Uh, this Hoshela, I see Mandla. No, it's, it's Christ Himself. Christ Himself. Yeah. And we Do you remember that that church? Moses Sono was the pastor. Yeah. Ona kenela kereke ko a school called Mavis Isaacson in Rockville. Okay. That Sunday. Yo, he was on fire. I don't know how I got to the front altar call. I don't know. All I remember, I found myself there. I was in tears. Mm. But within me, there was this peace. Wow. I couldn't explain. Mm. There was this peace. I found somebody. They <laughs> mutong embrace it. Yeah. And it it is a journey. Mm. It's a how can it it is like in a real marriage because there are obstacles. There are things you've got to unlearn. There are things you've mm. got to undo. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's where you found yourself. That's where I found myself. And and that hasn't changed. It's pretty obvious. No. It hasn't changed. So Hotkomaho has remained consistent in your life. Yeah. And what has kept it going? I Cause, pray. Because we falter. We falter. Yes. But when you have God in your life, yeah, it's God the Father, God the Son, and God the, tr- the Holy Spirit. Yeah. yeah. This God the Holy Spirit, you do not call him. He's not sitting somewhere else. Mm. He's rooted right in here. The minute you say, my mm. father, yeah. Jesus is there. The Holy Spirit is there. And I leave you with a comforter. A comforter who will teach you the way, who will show you the way, yeah. who will minister to you. And that's what the Holy Spirit does all the time. Stays with you. He stays with you. Yeah. Even when that light goes down, you feel the hunger. I am not well nourished. Let me go back and get my nutrition. Hmm. Yeah. The Holy Trinity. Yes. Most people who watch this will wonder about the career, the the acting school, if there's any at all, the, what is the first, the first real job now? Uh, but I'm curious to know, did you ever go to anything university-like or anything like that? Nothing. Yeah. Didn't Nothing. the parents who were already such journalists and so forth were exposed? Because all we ever need uh, in, our, in our lives are people who've seen things yeah. because they bring them to, to us. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't they say, Wanak, Ari, this is where we're going? You know, interestingly enough, my parents were very liberal. Mm. And when this television thing came, they were very supportive. Yeah. Ne? And one thing that my parents always said to me, Bare, I will eat daula hmm. because you're on television. Remember, you are still our child. Yeah. And you're obviously still living at home. Obviously. Yes. And then, um, Television comes and my mother one day sat down with me, Ampuzari, do you like what you are doing? Okay. And I said, yes. Aregona, this is something new mm. with us. We've never seen this before. So can you imagine when you are part of people who are making history who have just discovered this beautiful thing <laughs> and... And you inside it. You are inside it. <laughs> Do you want to continue with it? Yes, Mama, I'd love to continue with it if the opportunities are there. And that's how it happened. After Tsabacha, I remember I did 
an educational program called Haribapaleng. Okay, I think I remember something like that. Haribapaleng, yeah. it was a chicken and a frog. Mm. It had two presenters, a male and a female. It was done in Spedi, Sesotho, Setswana, Xhosa and Zulu. Mm. And then I went to audition to become the presenter. Mm. And I got it as a presenter. Okay. So in the process, they had to go and build this table that had to accommodate the chicken. Yes, with the and hand, the hand the coming in and it, yeah. Appetite. Yes, exactly. Come a day before we go into the studio. It was produced by a company called Louis Smith Productions. Louise herself comes to me and says, Clemmy, what's the problem? Uh oh. And I'm like, what is the problem? Mm. And she says, you know, you it for Odyssey for mm. a presenter. I say, yeah, Louise. And she say, the desk is a bit small because the lady who's supposed to go inside cannot fit and you are petite. Do you mind to swap roles? Oh. And I'm like, no, I don't. In, at that instant, something crossed my mind. I've never done puppeteering before. I don't even know how the puppet works. The guy who did the puppets and who was teaching us how to manipulate the puppets was called, his name was Hansi Fasahi. Yeah. Then Hansi came, very nice guy. Hansi came, I'll teach you how to handle the puppets. Wash your hands, use pow baby powder. This is how you manipulate it. Now, the challenge is when you go under the table, there's a monitor. And you must have a script. So, course, you look so you can have a conversation with those that are on top. The yeah. Presenters. So, so this chicken must be the one speaking. Yeah. So they must see it's maneuvering its head mm -hmm. and going on and responding. Yeah. And that was something new for me. Course. And, and this young girl. And I took it on. Hey. <laughs> I took it on. I do not regret it even today. Tell me why. Because it was a first time experience for me, and it taught me how to perform with my voice. Mm -hmm. And people only think performance is about being on screen. Your, your physique. face, yes, yes. But you perform with your voice. Hence, at the SABC, we had pro programs like In the Heat of the Night. There were American programs we that had to be voice. dubbed. Yes, I know. Radio 2000 was doing simulcasts, yeah. those type of things. And a lot of our actors today do not know about that. Wow. They do not know about <laughs> It's a challenge. Yes, they yeah. don't know how to pull it off. They don't know how to pull it off because you have to look at the script, you have to look at the screen. At times, the words are running right on top of the, there's a, it's called a bent. Mm. So it was bent writing, bent written. So that bent had to run on the screen and then you had to look at the lips, full lip sync. Yeah, it has to be perfect. Perfect. When you say, mm. <laughs> So that moment gave you the, those that lesson. Yes. And it has stayed with you, obviously. It has stayed with me. Do you ever, do you find your mind sometimes literally going back to that moment? Or, oh, there's that time where I need that skill. Yes, sir. When do you remember? And I'm, I'm really just asking this, knowing that you've done so much, where you saw, you, you used that skill. And, and do you have any reference of a moment where you actually required that skill? When you do movies, yeah, uh, like... Let's say we, we, I did how, in the, uh, how to ruin Christmas. Yes. Now so listen. at times the sound is not so clear. You have to go and do ADRs. Mm. That skill. You, oh, you have to go back and re-record. Yes. The you audio. Re, now yes. you re-record the audio. Yeah. So it has to be precise. Yeah. And how to ruin Christmas? The last three years. Yeah. It's a very recent project. Yes. Wow. Not last two years. Yes, last year we did. Oh, the last one. Because <laughs> there's two of them. Yeah. yeah, the, the, yeah. the really messy one. Yeah. Where the, the, the mother <laughs> passes away. The granny. Yeah, yeah, the granny passes away. Yes. So with those ADRs, you have to be precise. Yeah. Do, do you think you're a star? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not yet a star. I, I like the, the way you phrase it as, as, as yet. Is it something you still aspire to be? Yes, I'm still aspiring to be a star. <laughs> and I don't know what a star is anyway. I wanted to find out. I don't out. know what that's, a star that's is. That's why I'm, I'm curious, it, knowing that, what, what do you define as a star innocently? Because you said you aspire to be one, very innocently, what do you think a star could be then? Well, I think a star could be a household name. Okay. 
Okay, that everybody speaks of. Yes. What trend? You know about Denzel Washington. Oh, yes. You see, yeah, yes. <laughs> I think I think you're a star, and it, it's humbling to hear you say you're not. It really, really is to 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 sit in front of someone who's done, whose body of work is so solid, and they say, well, nothing like that yet. Yeah, nothing like that. I mean, m- m- until I get my billions. I guess. Okay. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. I guess. Until my name is somewhere in Hollywood, I guess. I guess. Okay. <laughs> right. Maybe. No, no. Yes. Maybe. Yes. Maybe you know? that. Exactly. Maybe that. It might never get there, but maybe. Yes. Yeah. I want to talk about some of the some of the works you've done. It's probably more than it's been documented. Yes. You know, because you find, like the puppeteering, for example, which I'm sure you've done for quite a while. It wasn't a one... For five years. Of consistent... Yes. Talking as a... What? What character you play? I was kept talking as a chicken. <laughs> I was playing... Poto! 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 And a yo! And a yo! Poto! Poto! For five years. Yes. Do you know the kids who... The older people who watch this say, I remember watching Poto as a child. Yeah. Amazing. And and then here's this child who's earning money. What happens to that child's life financially? Is there savings? What type of child is that in the household with parents? What happens to that child? Well, cuz now wahola, utsana le mama le papa no. Yeah, but you remain a child. That's it. That's why I want to find out the dynamics of a setup like that. You remain a child because if we we can allow money to change us, then it means the humility humility in us, humility in us is dying. Gone. Yeah. yeah. You've always have to remember to remain humane. Mm. Humility is very important. Hopola. Money cannot run your life. No. No. Ya fela chalet. Eh. Ene botobukai. Have to do the chalet. Yeah, because when all is said and done, yeah, we've where's your humility? Li, li we want the real you. Yeah, where are you? We we live in a time when money defines us quite a bit. I'm sure you're aware of that. That's why that's why I get very Louis Vuitton. <laughs> Now I'm like I don't even know how much it costs, but you get what I mean. I get what you mean, and I think because of being grounded in the Word of God, it says the love of money. is the root of all evil mm. hence we find the world in turmoil hence we find our government in turmoil because of the love of money, money yeah. the root of Aish. all evil it, there's nothing wrong in having money the love because if you have the love of it then it means you've got no boundaries you can never stop yeah about it then only 10000 yeah how it's over it's like only 5 And whether, however, where you get it, you're just going to go in. Exactly. And it doesn't matter whose heart you break or whose love you you exactly. ruin. You don't care. And that's that's where humanity is now, isn't it? Mm. It's the worst possible scenario. The worst possible, and it's so sad. Yeah. I want to go back quickly to aspirations. The star. <laughs> We live in a time now where South Africa, very slowly, uh, however, obviously happening. that we have South Africans that are breaking through the internationalness of their careers that you made reference to the Denzel Washingtonness of this the John Garnies of this world who are who are on 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 bigger screens so to speak uh, what in your opinion is it about the industry that you've been in since you were such a young child doesn't speed up these processes what is it about it that makes it tricky for for actors and actors and actresses like yourself to break through because for you to say you're not a star yet but maybe the starness is 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 bigger than you it's elsewhere what is it that's stopping this from happening easily so to speak money tell me about it how would money change things look at america mm. the denzel washingtons you're talking about When America, America has got household names. Yeah. And they put their money where their mouth is. That's true. So if they say, we are having a movie, we're making a movie about Winnie Mandela. Mm. They come with the money and they want to have their own, from their own country to play Winnie Mandela. Mm. But this is where the challenge is. You don't think like me as an African. No. You can be a black American as you can be. You do not react like I do. So you're saying the portrayal may not be pitch perfect. Exactly, never. Yeah. Never, 
never mm. and that is what what limits stars south african stars from breaking through yeah because they come with their own brands and then when i will just become a support mm. because they have the money yeah. if we had the money that they had we would be doing popping on again like we did because popping on again was not funded by any american company it was funded by black south african by not even black but by south, south african, african companies yeah. and directed by a south african director is it a christian christian oliver yes yeah is the one that says you would uh, you would have still caught us emotionally even if you didn't say a word even if the movie was a silent movie it would have had the same impact and i so wish i had more directors like him yeah because he's got an ear to listen and he's got a soul to receive mm, mm. he gets it he gets it where is this money I don't know. We, we're not the poorest country in the world. Where is this money for the arts? I don't know. Do you find that it's a it's a underfunded sector? I find that it is an underfunded sector. Very underfunded sector. And yet South Africans love it. Yeah, we love it. By the grace of God it is still going. Nothing on earth happens without the acknowledgement of God. Yeah. God has to give it a green light. That's it. Yeah. But unfortunately it is wherever God releases to. Mm. What do you do with it? It has to be well received. It has to be well received and it has to be well used. Even opportunities. Even opportunities. Okay. <laughs> You're making me think. <laughs> I wonder what are you thinking about? <laughs> Nothing really. Thinking about how we get opportunities some we don't notice, some we do, and when we get them, what we do with them. You use do we use them for greater good or not? You know, it's all of that. So I guess my mind was going everywhere in in my life experience. It's also remember when you get an opportunity somebody gives you that opportunity. Yeah. But it also depends on the people who give you the opportunity. Do they receive you well? for you to stay on. Mm. I remember SABC, hey, SABC used to be SABC. You know they used to have awards, artist awards, artist really? awards, artist awards. In the 90s, before 94. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. They were not I guess they were not well publicized. I but they were top notch. Five star. Wow, nearly the Grammy awards. Bona. <laughs> nearly the red carpet. Yeah. Nearly the champagne glasses they let them go to an actress awards. Hey, when? Yeah. And Halifax about you can take them home. Whatever. Yes, as a souvenir. As a souvenir. It it got like so debate and whether about 10 or about 20, you know. And I won best actress. Mm. For I which was, which role? Do you remember? For Sulufelo. Okay. And then I was nominated for best dubbing artist. That's the voice type. That's the voice type yes. of thing. Yeah. Not not the chicken one. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's the voice the the, yes. the, the lip sync. The dubbing one. Yes. yes. Yeah. And then then I happened to hear somebody saying, you know actually you had one dubbing one, yeah. but because we had already heard that on the acting side you had already won, we decided to give it to the producer. That was very selfish oh, and unfair. Banna. That was very selfish and unfair, but anyway, it's okay. Mm. And yeah. SABC was SABC so we did have those awards it, it stands out how you pause for a moment because we were not talking SABC mm. we're talking industry in mm. general mm. but at some point industry in general was SABC at the, yes yeah. at that time it was nothing else if you're talking I'm an actress you're talking SABC so that's the only channel exactly uh, when we look at the industry then and now is it a, is it a challenged industry is it a struggling industry has it gotten better i'm sure it has but where is it now when we look at it as as people who are inside it because it's for us we're just waiting for the next show we're just waiting for for the next how to how to ruin christmas we move on with our lives but people who live it every day we have to exist in it every day how do you see it is it a challenge is it difficult is it easy to get work and i imagine it's different from person to person but in general what 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 is your experience you know Everything improves, everything grows in this world and then you start having your social media platforms and then you have people having followers. I don't know where do those followers follow you to. I don't know. <laughs> and then you find our industry 
saying something very ridiculous, saying, how many followers do you have on Instagram so that they give you a role? Mind you, being a thespian has got nothing to do with anybody following you following on Instagram. You. Yeah. Yes, you can have those followers, but if you don't have the craft, what good does it do? So you're saying the industry has suffered that challenges? In that way, yes, it has for some of us. Yeah. Money-wise, some companies just, they just decide, we'll just give you a budget yeah, 10 years ago. Yes. We want your craft, we want your skill, but we don't have the money to pay you. How sick and ridiculous is that? Mm. And there are other companies that still step up to the platform, come to the table and say, we know you've got the skill. Mm. This is how much we can respect you. And we start negotiating. Of course. And you start appreciating because you see where they are coming from. But there are just those that just decide already. Sorry. Sorry, baby. It's all we have. And that's not all they have. And they think they don't know. Some of us, we come with an experience of have been having worked behind the scenes yeah. and knowing how things are done. Mm. And they don't, some of these producers don't even know us. They don't even know how far we come from. They just take us at face value. But I, but she's good. Okay. Yeah, Marabatsi be your journey. Yes. How long have you traveled? Huh. What experience do you have? What do you have in your bag? Yeah. I've worked for radio. Tell me about that. After I won my artist awards, award, mm. Then, by then, Meshalot Mampani. Yes, yes, a former SABC executive. Yes, yes. Okay. By then. Yeah. And they say we'd like to have you for an audition just to test your voice on the mic. Ure uh, Teleko I know it well. That's where Lapuloha used to be shot. Oh, <laughs> Taloha, get it. Yes. And then I go auditioni, get zena, bababare, pirogio. That's it. That's it. Which show? Was it a radio? Monday program? to Thursday. Hey. Women's. Women's pro. Nine, nine to 12. Mid morning. Mid morning. Hey. Monday to I didn't Thursday. Know that. Your story is. is your, oh, it's what? By internet. They didn't acknowledge that part Have of the story. How about Yeezy, man? How about Yeezy? Not Monday to Thursday. It's called Silverton. So you became. I used to do that show. I know it well. Uh, so you became a, a radio Setswana, radio su superstar. Yes. No, le ba le barbo tsanga se sepa. Bona ke ke go blella. You know, I remember ga ke feel ga ke sansane ke kra those o sansane ona le a producer who wants to put things together for of you. Of course. And uh, for me they were slowing me down <laughs> because ne le ba le ba tsanga go radio ba ntu. Oh yeah. And then ona I want to do things. We tsika ma follow follow a le gore it's again. Mo chama. Ke mo chama no it's again. And I remember I would honor prisoners. Mm. Hmm. I would honor bomb member Berakang Thursdays. Thursdays is Sheila's day. They are off on Thursdays. I would honor them. I would honor patients in hospital. Yeah. And there was a day I did a program on barrenness. Okay. And I had to go and find my own people who would come into the studio to come and talk about barrenness. Mm. What mm. do you think of it as a doctor? And to my surprise, Ghana <laughs> Black psychologists were not willing to come without getting anything. On radio? I, radio hyper-day, like it. So unusual, though. Yeah, yeah. radio hyper-day. Yes. And then, when I was talking about the radio station, I was talking the radio station, I was radio station, I was talking about the package of your freebies. Mm. You know, it was a nice, decent freebies. Yes. And she came. And... I'm 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 searching in my mind. Regarding that, can I go to the door? I'm trying to ask all the specs. The limb station manager in the I wouldn't remember. We said Swana. Nah, I remember Bob, <laughs> Radio Bob. <laughs> Not that. Yes. Okay, I'm going to go to And then he said to me, "Good luck, Baru Utlisa, a white psychologist. This is a Swana-speaking channel. Yes. Can we get I'll translate on A." Mm, <laughs> and that lady came and we had that program and amazingly enough mm. people were calling in were guys gentlemen yeah but too yes at the end of the show yeah mm. As I opened the studio door, he was standing there. Come on, the, 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 the station, the station manager. manager standing yeah. at the door. Yeah. I came if I could walk home. Wow. What a great job. That's amazing. Yes. It's good that 
he had the humility yes to to say i was wrong yes yeah yes jeez did you carry that program for a while yeah i carried it for a while your radio career surely it's not something that it's not even celebrated when people tell your story i know <laughs> and then why i had to leave the drama department at sbc then came and they said can we, and we were as a freelance act, a, a presenter by then there wasn't that much money. no 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 so babang kopa drama department dear sbc gore we have a huge project for you in cape town mm. please can you come pack your bags pack your bags <laughs> and i had to pack my bags what what program was that <laughs> so i did this show yeah uh, yeah, yeah beautiful yeah yeah, yeah, yeah beautiful and yeah, 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 was that What the Cape the Town show. In Cape Town show. Yeah. Near the shooter go Cape Town. Right? Yeah. From the no go Devon. Devon, Devon Cape Town. Uh. Cape Town. Jeez. Because I remember I had just finished doing a road show with yeah, HIV and AIDS. Okay. And then at the radio. Finished, yeah. No, no, no. Industrial theatre. Okay. Then when I finished, Baba Mpitsa ban ban ba tlo khatlametsa go Cape Town go go ka pa ke ya Nikisona e free state ke akapa then ke lo ira that show ya yeah. CBC. You know listening to project after project after project has it always been like that? Yes. So you've been by the grace of God. You've been working by the grace of God. Yeah. By the grace of God. I don't know how but by the grace of God yes. And are you however you are aware of struggling actresses and actors and actresses. Yeah. I say this because you know it's easy for us to think because when we see people on TV we think bash up mm, you know mm. TV has been our Instagram for a long long time yes uh, to us mutwatswa mu TV o shapo ona le zaka life is good uh, even if they got one job a year for us ah, that job will sustain them for a long time because we don't understand but it's not that easy is it No, it's not that easy because when at times what you see on television, maybe it was recorded three months ago, and by the time you see it, aksabereka. And ha- and again, ago sabereka. Again, ago sabereka. And when you see me on television, you think I'm working and I'm not. And that's common. It's common. Yes. In your in in this industry. Yes. How do people make it? Well, some of us we've got voiceovers. Yes, you know? we're talking about voiceovers. Yeah, voiceovers, yeah. advertising on radio, the voiceovers, the, the, the radio spots to, exactly. to, to, to yeah. name them correctly. Exactly. The radio spots, that's how you, you find how um, you survive. Kind of you get smaller roles in some programs and then you do them mm. and you find that, yeah, until the next job comes. It sustains it you. It sustains you. Yeah, because when you say until the next job, the next big job yes. is that it has... You know, continuous work and mm. so forth. It's not just in and out. And for some, it's just unfortunate. Ure, yo, wa kwa fela mutai sabereke, and it is so sad. So, what most people may have experienced in 2020 during COVID, in the acting in industry, is common. Mm. It's been there for a long, long it's time. Been there for a long, long time. Wow. The but is there is there awareness though? It always it can help refer to the powers that be. Is there general awareness that this is not an easy industry but yet a necessary industry? I think for some of us, yes. There is awareness. Yeah. There is awareness. Hence the industry is still having television going on. Come on, you still have got theater. You still have got radio. True. And you cannot separate radio from television. No, no, no. <laughs> you can't. You, can. you have radio dramas. Yeah. <laughs> Take me to to this you now having to say I'm leaving a radio career. That is starting out. That's bubbling. It's be, it's becoming a thing, and you're deciding to leave it. Was it an easy decision for you? Besides the the money and other opportunities, I think for me it was because I was freelancing. It was easy for me because I was looking. For, kind of freelancing doesn't mean you're there to stay. You never no. know what to decide anymore. Next, I thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, you know, and at that time I was still hoping or a. And David Mount that you see the name is I mean I was fast <laughs> I was still waiting for them but we're going to take you on permanently yeah. and do not forget radio on its own has been male dominated, dominated. That's true yeah. for so long so even long. now it's still even with journalism yes it was male dominated I remember my mother she was working with all these male drivers and all the editors were male hmm. photographers were male yeah yeah and now It's always refreshing to have these young 
females coming yes. into the industry. Yeah, and it's not easy. No. More especially if you are making people to be on their toes, mm. looking mm. back and say over over their shoulders, it's like, oh, <laughs> 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 is there jealousy in the industry even now? Has it's, there always been? I think where you find human beings, there'll always be. Hmm. Have you ever experienced it directly? Where you say, yeah, ne. Yeah. Baba we, kawa. Baba won't get a job. What? Yeah. Do you want to tell us? Yeah. No, I can't tell the <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean Okay, okay let's use okay. it. Let's use it. Let's use it hypothetically without referring to individual yeah. stories. Yeah. What this is for example what could happen. For example, much you can just step in maybe you want to achieve sometimes or maybe how right in and then they come in and they say we want King David to do this. And somebody says, nah. no. <laughs> no. Why? No, no, no. Not him. Why? Uh. No, not him. He's I've got somebody. Perfect, he's yeah. the perfect character, but no, not No, I've got him. somebody better. And not have. And if it's Lekhore, you've got a better experience and skill than whoever they're going to put in. The gentleman's name is David Mutibi. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. David Mutibi. Yes. You, you you remembered him. That's quite interesting. Yeah, <laughs> his name kept on. Coming yeah, it's a kept on bit. coming. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Wow. I can even visualize him. I can see him. Yeah. Yes, you can see Remotive. him giving yes. you those accolades. And he was say. very strict. Yeah. But when I walked out of the studio, I was so humbled. I was standing there. I don't know. Area, well done. Well done. Wow, amazing. I'm a I'm a true radio person through and through it's a career i've done now for 22 years i more. love radio yes what is it about it for you that that stands out you know you're are, you are alone in that studio but it's like you've got an audience yeah. you just fall in love with this mic and you fall in love with those people when they start responding and calling in i love radio yeah i love it you describe it exactly the way i see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. exactly the way i see yeah it. you fall in love with with the audience and yes. it's a it, it's a phrase i use often even two days ago when i was on air i said i think about you a lot and i was referring to the audience yes that i worry about you a lot i worry about your household i yes. worry that your, your your the people you love are well they've eaten uh, are you well are you well mm. are you are your dreams coming true yeah you know i i worry about you and i just thought while i'm worried about you let me express my love for you and mm. say Without you, I am nothing. And that means so much. Yeah. Because because we forget the natural connection between mm. this this you in the studio alone and the people that are listening to it. Mm. To them, you are not a radio presenter. You're a friend whom they hang out with yes. every day. Yes, you are in their homes. And they can feel you. They connect yeah. with you. Yeah. My <laughs> first Christmas school radio. Mm. Were you working go Silverton, by the way? Yes. You would travel all the way. I would travel all the way. Sure, that's not and then there. <laughs> Christmas festive season, where you see some of them, they don't come in about relieving. Mm -hmm. And then you have to carry on. Eish. And then... Wow, so you're doing a double shift. It's a double shift. <laughs> and then Bamu did a, a library even prepared the music. music work work. And then I see this album, Mia Blondie. Mm. And then I say, let me try this. Oh my word. And there was another one that I played. I was like... Whether kids, hey, or this guy, what was wrong with it? Yeah, Jubetina. Nearing, what was wrong? Jubetina and Kamasepa. I was like, oh my word! I'm stuck with the song. Must I continue playing it? Why do I have that? Was there ever a complaint? The Hosna Broadcast Complaints Commission gonna quit you, so you managed to get away with it. Yeah. Wow, what an interesting career. I want to come back to to this girl who knows how to speak languages so well. Because to be on 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 Radio Setswana, uh, you have to have a particular level of of comprehension of the language and how you articulate it, without having to read it. Eliano, you you speak it, and 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 I know because I I've been doing radio ads for so long with different languages. How they want it to be perfect is it such an important part of the story. Mm. You cannot. Upa is a, the pronunciation, the accent. They will tell you some uh, very quickly. Mm. The Tswanas are strong with that. The, the Zulus are hectic. Mm. Um, I was about to tell you the Sotus will throw it out. Mm. They will tell you, no, no, no. 
wazama hey. but we are zamiru mm, hareleke <laughs> yes, we doing Bragua. it right exactly so it's all of that and that's why every time i hear people who want to do voice overs and they say no african language i say based on our conversation so far i don't think you'll pull it off yeah but maybe you have something that i can't see mm. so so how did you when i go so it get your language so right kibalile sitswana madle sitswana u don't want simulese ka sitswana yes isimulese ka sitswana ko tsogang tsogang ke sekolo sa batswana ke simulese ko sitswana ka sitswana papa ke motswana so ka mo site na papa ya 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 bo papa ya musima musima ne ke sitswana and then ko sekolo ka be ke ithuta sotho ke bala sotho site ne bo mama ke speedy ke african se u fitlhela puo ya se yeng se se ja african se o le english ke o and then re tsame ka le bana ba mazulu e ne ba ya gago ke mozulu o positive ke motlhotsa o ya theta and then leng leng u fitlhela ko high school u be re bola bola re tsana le bana ba bola bola tshitsonga o tshwanetse go rona bola bola ntsongo i guess the question i'm asking is with all that nyaga nyaga how do you get the clarity of language because you go to soweto now you go to dieta which is a petty word mm mm-hmm. Uh, but the people in Soweto will tell you immediately that Aba we speak. But banal dieta. Eh I don't know if kidieta in Setswana as well. Gas Soweto. Gas kidieta gas Soweto. Di tlhaku ka Setswana. Aha, you see, you get you go to Pretoria, kid tlhaku. And the people of Pretoria have a very strong uh, a petty influence in the language. However, kid tlhaku as dieta. Eh and how do they are speak this? So so how do you get the clarity of language? Uh, in in an environment that has so many languages as you've defined around you and you maintain this i will keep saying <laughs> and, and, and you came out and said i will speak them perfectly that can't be easy i've got a respect for languages and for culture yeah so i believe gore ha ke batla ho bua puo ke tlamela hore ke ibue e hlwekile it's a pame patame e ra ke bua o tlo hantlo go ke bua sotho o tla fela le accent di ke you got it that's crazy yeah so uh, when we separate say i get why you say sona sna le bo gba ba ntse di g se sotho sna le bo di h ba ngata e jwa le you take time o tsa nako gore o itse gore e re ke buise and listen to when people speak mm. listen to radio how ready is essence otawutlo and i think it's because of le rato le kana for yeah. for people and you know so so you you are aware of your effort to get it right i am yeah i make an effort le ka sezulu ke botsa handle ke re nithi le re khorokeng ka sezulu ha se munyango ke stapa oh i would have said munyango eh stapa yeah so mele ukuthi wazi ukuthi makhuluma kahle ngesizulu khuluma kahle uzwa kahle ukuthi you see what i mean uh, and and it's not like you lived in those spaces no you didn't live in and i worked with there. i worked with zulu speaking people the pangele na madaba tete stores and afunda you know so then 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 that means you have a uh, an ability to absorb it easily yes and and this is something that i'm aware that not a lot of people can do i've been learning khosa in the past few years because i worked with a khosa producer mm. and i liked having her around because i would hear words because mm. i couldn't process words in in khosa and now i think okay okay i can say that yeah. i can say yeah, that yeah, yeah, still yeah. tricky but i can say it a lot better than i used to but it takes effort it takes a lot of work mm. but mm. for you to have so many That can't be easy surely Africans on top of it First time you know Hey Africans isn't so good Ah Maria is good Next next But I thank God for that Yeah so you are aware that this is some form of a, a skill Yes Has that skill given you as young people would say if it's if, has it given you bread <laughs> Of course Yeah It worked for me What I've worked at this Tosa yes. I've worked in Sizulu ke bile tse se pedi ka bua swana ka bua se sotho ka bua fikantse ka bua english you really he ke santsa ni ke ithuta like i i i am falling in love with chitsonga and venda and chivenda e chivenda e chivenda it's a bit difficult it's our french but interesting interesting the venda speaking people say if you understand se pedi venda is not easy it's not that difficult but you're i'm not sure i'm not sure <laughs> not sure you, i love the language yeah mm. It's interesting eh but how uh, how it but we ni kakadia hona I only know uh it mean 
<laughs> Wenda. Wenda. Ah. I got it from McG, so forget that. I get, I get it elsewhere. Wow. For me, that, that to be able to do that, it's quite quite interesting that you pull it off. What what still makes you smile with so much work and in your in your in your arsenal, you've done so much, and with the challenges that South African South Africa faces and everything, what still makes you, you know, say, okay, we all, we all right. What makes you smile? Life goes on and you have to make a choice. Do you want to remain happy or sulk? Yeah. I don't want a lot of wrinkles on my face. <laughs> <laughs> so what you say when you sulk? Yeah. Why it's in you? Yeah, why it's in you. I got to do it. No. You don't want that. I don't want that because life goes on. Yeah. You know, my mom passed on in 2015. My father passed on in 2006. Mm. And those are the worst scenarios you can go through. I've lost so many members in my family and when you think of the pain at times it doesn't make you feel good but you've got to understand Uri. that word of God says we are not here to live forever mm. we are here as visitors and passing through so one day I will meet them because they knew Christ as their Lord and Savior That's it. and life goes on so I have to appreciate the life that God has given me yeah yes and that's it eh? yes it's not that complicated no. Do you find that we complicated? I find that as human beings, there are things that we complicate in life. Mm. We complicate life as it is. What comes to mind when you say that? Guys, <laughs> 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 we are on the spot. I'm aware. Yeah, uta complain. Today I want abroad. Mara oring, are the faith that you have, it will save you. Yeah. In my mind, so Father, I thank you for this glass of water that I am drinking. May it fill me up. But because I believe, it will fill me up. I think somehow, somehow we also lack the faith and the hope. Mm. We lack that faith. We want to somewhere as a pedestal. And we want to make things happen for ourselves in our flesh. And we don't have that much of strength. To pull it off. To pull it off. Mm. You can't lift this house even if no, you want it. No, I can't. No. But with the help of God, you, this house can be lifted. Yeah. The, the challenge that comes with being famous. <laughs> is there any challenge? People will always come to us for money. Is it something that you've noticed very early on? Very early on. Yeah. People would like, just want to take an advantage. You know what you... Mm. 20 rand. 20 rand. Yes. You don't just give money away. Why And if, don't forget, this money is alive. And when I give it to you, it has to be a blessing in your life. So don't just take it. Mm. Because I have, as I release it, it has to be a blessing to you and to not me. a curse. Yeah. So you find that that is a consistent reality of, of that comes with fame. Yeah. Do you find where you live, you get strange knocks on the door? Yeah, they'll come. I talk about television. Do you know what it takes to be on television? Mm. Do you have the experience? Do you have the character to be on television? Because on, as people, we need that character in everything. You need it. Mm. Do you have it? So do you find people who, for them, it's a, I just want to be famous, whatever. They want a quick, short journey to, to where you are, for example. And talking about that, Rona, when we started, it was not about fame. Mm. It was a career, something we fell in love with. But today's kids, they want to be famous. Mm -hmm. And remember, fame has got an expiry date. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, fail. Yeah, fail. And you are aware that you're famous. I am aware. Yes. I'm aware that I'm well known. Yes, and you recognize. <laughs> I recognize it. What is the what what odd things happen when people see you? I like Joburg people, they ignore you. No, they want to take pictures with you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Picture do. Whether waja, whether kukai, they want to take a picture. <laughs> they don't with you. care. But I, 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 I embrace them, and we have to have a way of talking to our people. People have grown. People have matured. They understand the industry now. Sorry, but you But you camera it's gotten better. It's gotten better with time. And, 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 and the money that comes with, with fame, is there a lot of money in this business? 
I, I, I ask this because I'm thinking some kid who wants to be famous and have money. In television, is there a lot of money? Yes and no. Okay. I like such answers because then they give us a chance to explore all pos- possibilities. Yeah. I get it with television. You understand, Uri. You have to negotiate. And it also depends on the length of the project. Mm. It also depends on the length of the character in the show or how long is that character going to be there? Mm. Yeah. And so, yes and no, there is. It depends how you negotiate mm. and what they are willing to offer you. You sit down and say, I'm okay with that or not. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's, let's, let's improve talk. This. Let's improve this. Yeah. And once they say, yes, we can improve it with this and you feel that you're good. Thank you very much. I receive it. Thank you. The character you played of uh, Tandi Mazwai in Rhythm City in South in, in in Soul City Soul City rather mm. it lasts at very long yeah and i use the word very very carefully so it doesn't sound like that, right? you over Five years. welcome yes mm. is that the type of projects you talk about that gives you consistent income yeah like on the, i'm on the estate right now yeah it gives you a consistent income to sustain, to sustain a proper yes, life proper yeah life, yes. and luena you have to be clever in how you not even clever, wise. Let me use the word wise. Mm. You need to have wisdom on how to handle money. We need to have wisdom on how to handle money. Yeah. Oscar Haifika, then you've got unnecessary things that you waste your money on. Invest some of the money mm. because you're thinking of the future. Like the ends. Exactly. You spoke of. Yes, sir. I got a call earlier today from someone asking, doing research on freelancers mm. and the life of a freelancer. And I remember in her line of questioning, we're looking for, she was looking for the unfairness of the freelance life. And I said, it's, it can be unfair if you have chosen it. You can decide not to do it. Have you found that the life of a freelancer is a very difficult one? We've when, always been freelancers. That's why I asked. I've always been a freelancer. And you've survived. I've survived. Yeah. And this is where the world is today. How do I share but people are not getting permanent jobs anymore. They're getting contracted work mm. and contract Eva from this period. Is, and it depends on at the end of this period, are they going to renew the contract? Or not. And there's always the possibility and freelancing. that they want. Yes. Yes. So, so there's nothing necessarily unfair about it. It, it depends on your decisions. Yes. Izo, Izo. <laughs> you played a role there. What role was it? I was a teacher. Yeah, you were right in the thick of it. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's where the mess was happening. Yeah. What do you remember that stands out about that project? Because it was quite a landmark project in, in the portrayal of black people on television, uh, in taking the, the life of Yagukasi and show it. What do you remember about that moment? You know what was interesting, Kayizo Yizo? Yizo Yizo was not just a project that they sucked out of their thumbs. Mm. It was a project that was meant for the community to get the community talking because it was between the Department of Education mm-hmm. and the production company that did that project. I think it was Bomb Productions. Bomb Productions. Yes. And even the school, it is the school where exactly the things that were happening in Izo Izo wow. were happening at that school. It's crazy. Yes. And, and do you find that it achieved much? I think for the time it did achieve much because it had to expose what was happening that people did not know what was happening about 1987, 1988. Yeah. So it had, it, it did its job. Hence today you can't go and recreate Yizo Yizo. Its era is gone. Gone, hey? Yeah. So much has changed. Yeah, it's gone. Because, you know, you've acted in such landmark projects. I have a list here of the long run, Isibaya. It goes on. It's Black Tax. Uh, which one is it here? Housekeepers, Gold Diggers, The Lab, Rhythm City, um, Zanzi Love. I can't even ask you which one stands out because there's so many. When you close your eyes, what do you, what, which one of them you, do you see often? Because the brain has a tendency of going to a moment that whatever impression it may have left you, what, when you close your eyes, what do you, what, which one stands out for you? You know, every project that I do, it's special on its own. Yeah. But when I did Popinongena, it stood out so much for me because her life and her journey is still relevant even today. Mm. And because it is based on a true story. And I find that in some way or the other, we forget our journeys, or is I don't know. Is it because 
the newer generations do not know where they are coming from mm. and it is not jotted down it's not recorded for them to understand because those kind of stories for me is our history that our children should be taught in schools yeah. and they are not taught Mm-mm. 1976 It is part of our history that's supposed to be taught in schools. Our kids don't know about it. Mm-mm. And you ask them, they think 76 is just a day to go and wear your uniform and get drunk. Hmm. And when, they, when, when they commemorate it. Yeah. It's so sad. There's so much more to the story. There's so yes. much more to it. Yeah. And because and, and the story of Popino again is such a, a landmark. Right? Well, the fact that it's a true story, it's actually quite interesting because her life was hard. Mm. The portrayal of of her life must have demanded a lot from from you. Mm. What type of research planning do you do to portray a life of a struggling a black South African living during apartheid, struggling to find a identity in her own country because she was being a, she was being a foreigner in South Africa yet she was South African. What were the challenges that you had to find to, to dig deep to find that, that character? I think for me because my grandmother was a kitchen girl. Mm. She would always relate their stories for koma khaying. Go 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 the kitchen in Hoyang. And for me, my generation was just at the tip or at the beginning when they were faced facing out the kind of life where the passa le apartheid. I was just at the beginning of the tip yeah. to experience this freedom life where we say I'm not going to withstand that. A little freedom. Yes. Mm. I'm not going to withstand that. Mm. Hence, ka 76, we had the older brothers Bozietsi saying, we can face you with a dustbin lid and with a stone in our hands. True. Yeah. So, Banabaruna today, they are in a comfort zone. They have everything exposed mm. to them and they do not know their history, where they come from. Yeah. And I think that's why It's one reason that they do not appreciate life. Mm. I still appreciate life because I know what it meant for my mother to carry a dompas. You've seen both sides. I've seen both sides. Yeah. I know what it was for my granny to come early mm. heavily from the kitchens. That was experienced by my mother most than me because now by the time I grew up, my mother was already working and I was having that mm. middle class life. So your grandmother's life was in some way what you were portraying. Yeah. In in Popinong and as most life. of our house fami- house families we had aunties, grannies, Course, mothers who lived Popi's life. Who lived Popi's life. There's a scene where you're separated with with the children. They get into a truck and they drive off. Yeah. And you turn back. Mm. You look. You face the camera as the truck is driving. You are facing the camera. The truck is driving behind you. They fade away, and your your expression. You have the same expression, by the way, in the Metropolitan uh, commercial that you did, exact same, where you cry so hard that I look at it and say, "That can't possibly be acting." <laughs> that can possibly be acting and I sit here and say how in the world do you do that I wish I could do that <laughs> how in the world do you, do you cry on demand how do you separate from your kids yeah. because of a system so you were feeling it I was feeling it feeling it on behalf of a black society yeah. what they have gone through mm. separating from your kids and then I'm still going to a white woman's house to look after a white child to comb their hair yes and <laughs> sing to them yeah and yet you can't spend time with your children I can't huh. yeah. I'm having a broken family my family is literally broken down because of the system mm. your husband's illness yes yeah and that's where South Africa comes from because we've had people men coming from Limpopo from Pumalanga coming to the mines to come and work in Gauteng mm. and they've left their families they've created other families here hmm. we're still there we're Nicaragua. still there yeah that's why Skotug yeah, yeah. This, we're still there yeah and today it hasn't changed you're talking about feeling like a foreigner in your own country I today still feel like a foreigner in my own country yes we are embracing Africa but how do you embrace people when you have not yet cleaned out your back door How dirty is our back door? It's so dirty. Let us see it. Education. Let us see it through your eyes. Where, where, where are we got education? Mm. Where are we? 
employment, factories shutting down. Hmm. Where are we? Not having the land that we're supposed to be having. Mm. Not having our kids giving, getting the proper education and proper history of their country. And we're sitting here saying we are having democracy. What is democracy? What is it? It is a monster mm. that has torn homes and society apart. What is the problem? Where did we get it wrong? Because we in power, isn't it? Who's in power? Blacks. Really? <laughs> you Do you think so? I'd like to think so. I'd like to think uh, the State of the Nation Address, when it's done, it's done by a black man uh, who understands the challenges. He grew up in Soweto. His uh, family still in Shoel. Uh, so his reference is not ambiguous. It's not fuzzy. It's quite clear. Unfortunately, I don't feel the freedom as long as I am in this industry because even in the budget speech, my industry is not included in it. To them, it's entertainment. It's not work. Hmm. And to me, it's edutainment. It educates and it entertains. Yeah. But when the budget is spoken about, my industry is not mentioned. But I'm a taxpayer yeah. in the country. Yeah. And not 15%, 25%. I know. Yeah. I know how much they charge you. Yes. But as far as they're concerned, you earn a lot. Yeah. You're a high income earner. Yeah. It's a unionized environment amongst actors where you feel, let's pull together. This is a mess. We have to solve it. I say this because it's easy for us to, to complain and blame. But until we organize ourselves, very little is going to happen. And the blame is with us. The problem is with us, King David. Mm -hmm. Tell me about it. I remember way back when Dade Boyki Muslama was still alive, trying to pull actors together. We had an organization paid called Power. Mm -hmm. And Power today, it managed to, re if we have repeats on SABC, those repeats must be paid. Mm -hmm. Right? But then we spoke about actors who, may, who might sit at home for a year and not working or two years. Now, if you have this union, it says we need a minimum wage. Minimum. Mm. And then there's a company that decides it will go lesser than that minimum. And then because David has been sitting at home for two years and he says, I'd rather take that minimum below the minimum wage. What is it doing to the union? Yeah. It destroys the industry. Because the union is fighting for 10 rands, someone willing to take five. Yeah, or four. And, and, and when you really look at that person's story, you can't fault them. They haven't eaten for a while. Yeah. So they're thinking through their stomachs and not through their heads. That's true. That's where the problem is. And that's lies. a continuing problem. It is. It's not something, because you've been in it for so long. Yeah. You've been able to see it for so long. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So it goes back to that power that we speak about. Mm. Whether we have it or not, you seem to think we don't. We don't. We think we have it, but we don't. This power to change the rules of the game and accommodate everyone in the story. So when the speech is, is, is said, acting career, it, 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 rather the industry is acknowledged. And, and after acknowledging it, we see action beyond that point that helps this industry. What do you say to a young person who all they ever want to be is be Aus Clementine? That's their goal in life. What do you say to them right now? They haven't started. They're about to. They're, they're only dreaming of it. What do you say to them? I say to them, number one, you must understand this is not an easy industry. Mm. There are a lot of challenges. And if you do not have God as your guide and God as your shelter, you'll find yourself nowhere. Mm. And that is the truth. That's, that is my journey. I don't know about the next person, but that is my journey. Now I call about the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and I say, God, I don't know what you have in mm. planned for me, but this is my desire. Kikopa project, if God is willing. And some projects I don't get because God sees better, he knows better. I don't know why, but he mm. knows. Mm. And whatever I do not get, I'm still content with it. And I say, God, thank you. I know you've got a better project for me. Yeah, it's fine. It's you're, fine. You're able to walk away yes. from something that you dreamed of, you wished for, you prayed for. Yeah. And it's not coming. You're easily able to accept. Yeah. So that's what I tell the next person. You must be content with what you have. Because if you are not, you're going to do the wrong things to achieve what you want. Mm, mm. Do not step out of line 
to achieve what you want. The, it goes back to that money problem. Yes. The the root of all evil. Yes. The love for the it. The love for it. What is your support structure? You know, we all need somewhere to, you know, to say, hey, where are we? What is your current support structure? Who are these characters? This is the moment where we say, you know what, there's someone like that and they're useful. Do you want me to be honest? Please. When my mother was still alive, she was my support structure. I would share everything with her. Mm. When she decided with her court that she's bowing out, even that when she was there, some of the things, because I was protecting her, I wouldn't tell them to her because I had to protect her. True. So God has always been my support structure. The word of God has always been my support structure. Mm. Always. So you know where to cry to. I know where to, who to cry to. Yeah. And that's I a, know who to cry to. It's quite empowering. Yeah. What's your current family set up? My mom passed on. She was the last to pass on. Mm. To pass on. She had written a will. She gave me the house. Okay. I'm the firstborn. Yeah. I'm the breadwinner. I'm taking care of the home. I've got a brother who's got kids. Mm. I'm taking care of two of his kids. Two of the other kids are staying at their mom's home, even the mom, even though the mom has passed on. But if they come having needs, I'm always there for it's them. It's their home. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Ever been married? Yes. Is he still around? No, and I don't need him to be around. Uh oh. Why is that? May I ask? I can't leave it and not ask. King David. Marriage is a blessing mm. from God, created by God. And when people come together, they come together to complement each other. Mm. And God knows, Hore, there is something is put in me to empower you and there's something is put in you to empower me. Mm. But if one of us along the way does not recognize that and decide to go to the other side that does not include God, then that's a problem. Alsa Major. Alsa Major. Mm. It, the common ground I saw the Yes. Gila bono sa Major. No. Real nya lung. Yeah, marar Major. Major. Yeah. Aber pingi na ya ber kuwedu. Yeah. Har sa Major. You if if you lose your character as a person because mm. when you get married to a person you look for that character. Mm. And if you lose that character then it's a problem. Is is it a difficult episode this in your life this mismatch of characters have you looked at it as a difficult moment no i can't be with you if you, we don't match yeah because there'll never be peace there'll never be understanding so it's like out of my way do you find that we hold on to these things even though we see marar mechi and we some people do yeah some people do is it, for you was it as easy as <laughs> ah, yeah palai na david what King David, what happened was... <laughs> it's okay, I'm David. King David, what happened <laughs> was... Because of my foundation of knowing God, mm. I don't do anything without consulting with God. I wait upon God. Mm. I wait upon me. I in everything that you do. That's the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. I ask me. Yeah. So, in everything that I went through, I asked God, God revealed God responded mm. I saw until the moment of healing mm. when God was done with healing me I moved on and you surely remember the feeling of I think it's sharp no I feel yeah or I think I'm good now. no I would yeah I would Hurry. and it is also very important to forgive that person for mm. sharp mm. Otherwise, you carry this for too long. Because I wouldn't be talking like... Yes, you know? exactly. So you have to heal and yeah. forgive that person. Or you know what? He might not have known better. It's not technically not his fault. It's, no. it's exposure. It you thinks, know? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Do you have any kids? No, we didn't have kids. By the grace of God, thank you. <laughs> but I have a lot of... Adopted kids outside. Can yes. I go now? Ah, the commander that I'm taking care of. Uh. And genuinely, not like... Yeah, Ufeta. Uh -uh. Yes. Uh -uh. They're your, your kids. They visit, we talk, they call, we talk. Uh. Yeah. Are they family or even... Even. 
random. Most of them are not even family. <laughs> what 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 motivates you to continue doing that type of work? Because it's not easy. At times, it's not cheap. What motivates you to keep doing it? <sighs> I'll go back to my grandmother again. Yeah. Oh yes. I remember after she had passed on, I knew she was. Like Ublela, she would look after people. Somebody, sometimes you see somebody who look onto you don't even know Gimang. <laughs> sometimes she took people in by Dule Lerona and then yeah. after some time they go. And then after she had passed on, there came a boy. He was in university and he said, my granny has been paying for him to university. We didn't know that. Yeah, but. So what, he came to, uh, to thank? Yeah. <laughs> we didn't even know that. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. So, you know, when God says, I bless you to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we don't understand it. And I'm interjecting, I'm aware. I bless you to be a blesser. Very different meaning. <laughs> no, a <laughs> blesser is something. <laughs> That's why carry on. To be a blessing. Exactly, yeah. carry on. <laughs> yeah. So when God blesses you to be a blessing, in other words, he says, when you have what you think is in abundance for you, pass on. Mm. Because that is a seed that you are sowing. And one day, it has to grow and you're going to harvest it. Yeah. In whatever way, I don't know, but you do harvest it. Maybe that's one of the reasons why I'm still blessed. God is still blessing me with work. Interesting. The, the Jews yeah. uh, they have this, this ceremony that they do where they pour wine into a cup mm. but there's a what could be a, a plate or a saucer mm. underneath and they pour it so it fills to the brim and then overflows and then it's it's now on the plate as well the abundance exactly and they say we i don't only pour for myself but i do for others as well what is overflowing i have to share it yes so it's exactly what you're saying yes Wow. By the way, Christianity was birthed by those Jews. I know. Yes. Yes. So the principle is exactly, it's exactly the same. exactly the same. Yeah. Wow. So you find yourself, but doesn't it overwhelm you sometimes? It does. Yeah. It does. And what happens in those moments? I weep sometimes. Ooh. Just. Ugh. I'm sorry. <sighs> what are you thinking of right now? <sighs> Just the goodness of God in my life. Yeah. So these, goodness. are these the tears of joy, man? Yes. I'm glad. What's overflowing in your life? Love. Love. Joy. You never at any point think this is too much. When there's a challenge that is going on for too long, I do say to God, God, this is too much. When is it going to stop? Mm. But when it is a blessing of abundance and just sharing, it's fun to do it. Yes. It's a, it brings joy to you. Yeah, yeah. It makes you feel good. You know, uh, it's not always that you, you get a chance to hang out with a superstar. And I'll tell you immediately, it's not, a, it's not every day you get it, uh, to speak to a superstar to a point where they end up crying. And I like that it's tears of joy. It's not sad tears. No. Do you think life has been good to you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You've been blessed. I've been blessed. Even when challenges come, challenges do come to grow us and to make us strong. Mm. And there are things that you ask yourself, why am I going through this? But you have to go grow through it so that you can know who this God that you're talking about is. Really is. Yeah. But life has been good to me. Yes. Yeah. God has been good to me. So you look at yourself and say, not bad. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. Not bad. <laughs> you, you would give yourself five marks <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. I like that you know because because we're very quick as people to to think our lives are a failure they're not working 
And no, then I'm sorry for interjecting. If I do that and say that, then it means I lack gratitude towards God. It's true. Yeah. Mm. And that's the worst character. Ever. Yeah, particularly towards God. Yeah. How not devil? Yes. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> why have you why You know, after he had healed those ten lepers, one comes back and says, Where are the others? Mm. Yes. Always remember to go back to God and say, Thank you, God. I want I want to start a series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bible stories cast cast Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> then you simplify these stories, they get easier to consume. Mm. Because there are such important stories that you find in the Bible that leave us with, with a lot of wisdom and empowerment. Mm. Which one of the many parables that are found in the Bible do you think you live by without even realizing? There are many, I'm aware. Look at your brain <laughs> running through the Bible. Because there's, there's, there's one that, that stands out almost immediately for me uh, of, I don't even know the story very well, uh, of, uh, you know, the, the sons who were given uh, coins and one did this and the other did that. And I don't even know the story very well, but it always comes to me and says, you're the one that should use it wisely so you empower yourself and not the one that hides it under the carpet. And, and, and when it's time to be, for it to be counted, you, you bring it exactly the way it was. You didn't do anything. You didn't cultivate. Which one of them do you live by? You know the one of the lady with the jar? Tell me about it. And she says, I've only got this left for me and my son. We're going to eat this. Elijah and Elijah the prophet comes. Mm. And we're only going to live by this. And after we eat this, we die. And he says, what do you have in your house? Mm. And he goes in with him and she, he says, I've got only this jar and he says go and borrow more hmm. and when she comes with the more the oil continues to pour it never stops it never stops wow do you live by that yes how does it reflect in your life the abundance I'm talking about yeah that's how it reflects the never stopping oil the never stopping oil wow you have been a, a blessing to us thank you so much you have I have interviewed so many people. So many have sat on that chair. But no one has clarified my current state of mind as much as you have. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, about the lessons, and particularly the, the Christian and biblical lessons. I think they, they will empower a lot of people. Uh, you know, because you are whom one we would look at and say, What are the is wrong? And, and you made it clear to us here, Hore, it's not luck. It can't possibly be luck. It's blessings. Yes. Mm. And your connection to, uh, to the, you know, God, to the Christ, is such a, it's such an important part of your life. Interesting, those who write your story don't forget that. You know that. <laughs> I know. That. They don't ignore it. Yes. It stands out so much because I've read up a lot about you in the past week. And every time I say, staunch Christian, you can't even remove it from her. <laughs> Don't pretend I you. And, 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 and I remember thinking, I'm going to hear about it and I want to see how far it goes. And you literally can answer every question with a biblical reference <laughs> <laughs> or your Christian reference. You're probably aware of that. Yes. And I think we are blessed to have that because we see your life every day. We see it on TV and movies. And we think she's just a lucky person who gets jobs because that's an easy way of simplifying life. But the reality of it is, you know it's not you. It's not me. And I'm not perfect. Yes. I'm not perfect. What preoccupies you? What rungs in your head a lot? It could be about South Africa. It could be your own life. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get things to run in my mind yeah. because they can make me go mad. Mm. For me, is to sit and read or watch something that is tangible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Then that puts me at ease. Okay. Really? Yeah. Do you do you do you like television work as a fan, as a viewer? It depends <laughs> what it is. 
I don't just watch any television work. Really? Yeah. Uh -uh. Or oh, difficult? No, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> difficulty. There are things that are toxic that I cannot watch. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You're not. You're not a big critic of bad acting. <laughs> are you? Uh, you know those, right? Kikbarzela span what to a useless ever. It's not Hosela span. It's when you ask yourself, how did you land this role? Mm. Who are the people sitting in power who mm. make decisions like this? Because surely there's somebody who could have done a better job mm. and that person did not get the opportunity. Yeah. Or is it because of what they were paying and they couldn't afford this person? Proper ta talent. Yeah. Yeah. But then also on the other hand, you give people a chance. So you're open-minded about the possibility of someone who's starting out and say, what is it? You've got to start somewhere. That's it. So you're open-minded <laughs> yes. about that. Yes. Yeah, and it's take camera on its own. It's intimidating. That, so you still find it intimidating? Well, yes. When I mean, there's a director there. There's a cameraman here. There's a sound man here. There's, there's so many people. There's so many. At times, you know. <laughs> you're still like... And and that intimidation is good because it makes you go yeah. a step more. Yes. Do you do you sometimes think I can't do this thing? Yeah. They're asking me. Do you? When I did Popinongena, it was like, am I going to crack this role? Am I going to crack this woman? That's before you started shooting. That's before I started shooting. Because mind you, it is a true story. It's a real story. Mm -hmm. And after we had shot Poppy Nongena, just before Poppy was released, mm. we happened to meet her real family. Yo. By this, you're done. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> it's packaged. Yeah. It's going to be released. Yo. And what the producer did before we came to meet her family to watch the movie with them. Mm -hmm. She gave them the privilege to watch the movie by themselves. Okay, yeah. And when I met up with the family, the daughter said, that night I didn't sleep. I was crying. I saw my mother in you. Wow. And the boy on the truck weekend, I met him. And he oh. Said, I was that boy. I am that Oh. It was. I'm know, that boy I'm on that the truck. I'm that boy on the truck. Who's can, driving off? Who's driving off? Ooh. And just to see the appreciation. Everybody was in tears, by the way. Mm. The appreciation that there's a legacy, at least, that their mother left. Yeah. Their real mother's name is Eunice Nzada. Yes, because I know that the story uses a. Yes. Even the book uses a different name. Yeah, because. She had to protect herself. She had to protect her children mm. at the time. I'm, I'm glad that the producers had the, you know, the wisdom to look for the family, not just take a story and turn it into a movie and, and move on. And also it was a grandchild who discovered yeah. the company and connected because they were, ah. the, the company was looking for them. For but the, oh, they it, couldn't know how to find them. But then this grandchild, for somehow, some reason, God just made it possible. Jeez. And she connected with the producers, the company, and yeah. And it all come, came together. Yes. So what, what did they say about your performance? You said they, we saw your mother, our mother in you. Mm. And surely that must have made you feel good. It made me feel good. It meant I did a good job. I yes. didn't let them down. Yeah. Yeah. Because, but still, amazing how you said you didn't think you were going to pull it off. What was it in the lines? Because then you were lo only looking at a script. What was it in the lines that you thought, oh, hell, this is another big one? It wasn't in the lines. Yeah. It was in the character of herself. Mm. Lines are there, you can say lines. But the character to come alive, Ooh. to pull it off the page. Mm. And make this person real. <laughs> yeah. Surely that can be easy. Yes. You've done that many, many times. <laughs> I'm surprised you still think you can't do it. <laughs> I'm surprised you still have butterflies once in a while. I think those butterflies do help you sometimes. Mm. Not to be too assured of yourself. They do help you. Yeah. So you need them. You need them. Hmm. This is Clementine. 
See, man, you still has butterflies? I'll be okay. <laughs> If you still have butterflies. Si se tu se jaholo motho tla mile go bele le tswalo. Tswalo le no no. Ke tona le tla o phulosa. Ka sa tsena mo ka confidence bo paisa re go. Bona fe. How do you have fun? <laughs> <laughs> I like to drive, I like to sing, I hang out with people who have their drinks. I like to barbecue. Really? Yes. What do you drive to? Good music. <laughs> my wall is full. Well, Quincy Jones. My, my I look I I, re, I look at Aretha there. I look at uh, uh, um <laughs> Who do we have? Uh, Who's that? Uh, Carol, Carol King. King. Oh, Carol I King. loved Carol Tapestry. King. My, Tapestry. One of my favorite albums. Hey, hey, it used to be. You've got And I see this. Oh, hey. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I look at the Quincy Jones at the back I see George Benson. Gay. Hey, yeah, no. So you love music. So you love, love music. music. Yes. yes. Yeah. So you're a true because South Africans but if you let called American music right taste and we could never spit it out we still have it inside of us and what about South African music I think it's not about being South African as Africa that's how God created us Yeah So you appreciate all of it All of it Yeah Yes That's amazing So you jive I jive You got moves I got move baby I got move. <laughs> 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 I don't I wish I had, I wish I had moves. Wow. So a groove. Yeah, groove. You grew out one alone without a drink. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But you you don't judge, do you? No, 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 no. Yeah. God never gave us the ability to judge people. Mm, mm. Because we are his creation. All of us. All of us. Good or bad. Mm. All of us. Yeah. Now Koya how is not my time. My time is not his time. So yeah. You don't judge, you eh? You have to judge. Damn, getting kinsy the wine again once a while. Eh. As long as you enjoy it. No, no. You know? I've been very lucky. I yeah. al- alcohol is not a part Blessed. of It's not part. Of, yes, well that's it. Yes. yes. Alcohol has never been a part of my life. Yeah. I remember once I was in in Social Guven as this guy who was completely drunk and I said to him and he, he could see he didn't care about the world. Mm. He was just enjoying his state. Yes. And I said I envy you man I wish I I could do what you do I don't want to me like do a baiza son wa hlanya son didn't give me reko today are you full time job or no be a stop are even if you don't want to I'll stop or call on me are are you lucky you don't do it and stay that way yeah i just carry on the way you are wow Have you ever had a drink? I'm sure you have. You yeah, I drink. have. Yes. I've had it. And but you're fine without it. I'm fine without it. I am fine without. And it. you haven't for a while now. I it's years. I'm fine without it. What was your favorite out of interest? <laughs> I'm I'm curious I really am actually. Neda Beg Rosé. Ooh. The God. Southern Comfort. How about me, Sima? Then I. How about me, Sima Neda Beg? No. Oh, it's, no. There are those who are after they hear you say that they're going to grab a bottle of Nidobeck. You know the thing <laughs> is the thing is as you grow and mature you know who there are younger kids that are coming up and they are looking at you as a role model. Mm. So you have to be not that I'm doing it for them mm. but because of the fear of God in me and knowing what God likes. And mind you I don't think God is against you overly wine ekana but don't abuse it. True. I think so. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately the world until Casey Iwile Ah, are you next? Owen. Are you near? Ah, are we starting? Owen. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got kids even in our families that are looking up at us and we have to be exemplary. Mhm. You can't okhale ngwana when I was into a wrong. Hence I say you can't smoke and say to a kid don't smoke. You can't say to a kid don't drink marukano ro mangwana ro tamonda kela biri moli. They do a better job kids mm. of observing. We are the mirrors to than, them. than hearing. Yeah. yeah, they do an amazing job of looking mm. and saying, "Okay, this is normal." Mm. Yes. That's it. Yeah. You can say it all you want. Yeah, but you are doing it. Yes. So what are you saying? You leave them with what they saw more than what they had. Yes. Sir. And for me it's such an amazing thing. Yes. Ever thought of changing your career at any point? I have. Okay. Mara Mudimo for some reason he, by the time Kerry I'm I'm just turning my back he was like bringing people calling Clementine can you please have you have we have a project <laughs> What was what led to that space of trying to, of thinking of changing I was after I got married and I thought maybe you know how men are sometimes mm. 
I have cut you out for this. I have dressed you for it. I have called you for it. It's your calling. Mm. So you embrace it. What was the man saying? Stay home. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Mm. But you know when you can see what Omotu is not self-confident? Mm. There's mm. a lack of confidence in him. When he calls you off when he went and then he wants to know, when are you coming mm. home? And how fast on Yala is like, I'm not taking a honeymoon. But you have to face reality at times and say, but I'm really curious at this job and God has blessed me with this job. I cannot kick it back to God. Let me embrace what God has given me and run with it. It sounds like there was a time, however, where you were saying, let me respect him mm. and stop yeah. this life. Mm. That's a big change yeah. for you to even consider. Yeah, but it didn't happen. Yeah. My God just said, I am still God on the throne. I'll throw you with projects. <laughs> I would like, boy. And I did not tell her. <laughs> I did not tell her. And surely that must have affected the marriage. Because mm. Kifar, you know, mm. you want to leave and the work, work is coming. It didn't affect the marriage. Yeah. Most of the time he was in the United States and then he would come maybe Kabo, December, then Azamai Kabo, May, June. Mm. So most of the time I was working. So yeah. Yes, it yeah. kept on going. Yeah, it kept on going. You've had an amazing, amazing life. Yeah. I and, and, you know, I look at it and say, I wonder what you still look forward to. If there's still something you... There's still a mountain that I want to get to the top of. What is that? Well, my career is still going on. One day, Kibatlalala may win Mandela. Whoa, that would be awesome. One day. One day. Yeah. And yeah, I'm in a process of opening a foundation. Okay. Um, what problem do you want to solve? This GBV thing. Mm. It comes from far. Absolutely. Out of anger, disappointment, we tend to brush the boy child with the same brush. Mm. And I feel, Hore, we need to go to the root. Where is the root? Do our boys know how to look after a woman? Mm. Do they know what does it mean to have a woman in your life? Some of them have been thrown away by their parents. Some of them, their parents have been murdered, raped mm. for some reason mm. that we do not know. But the question is, has their pain healed? Mm. Or, or been attended to? Exactly. Yeah. Have we asked them, what is your problem? Mm. And the more we say bitter things and negative things to, to them, the more negative they get. Of course. So, Nagina Nauri, the generation that is coming up, we have to take care of them and teach them better mm. and talk, have a conversation. And we've, it seems generations before, we've missed that. Yes. Because they're still left with the bad examples. Yeah. The references. Yeah. You know, that they're looking at. Mm. is the generation that missed this this bus. Mm. They, no one spoke to them. Yeah. And you, so most of them grew up in homes where the fathers were absent. At times the father is present but he's absent. Yeah. 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 You can feel the rejection. He cannot... Wow. He, the, the, our kids, they're not even used to kissing their moms. Mm. When you talk about love, they talk about love of sleeping with a girl outside. They don't know motherly and homely love. Mm, mm. Such a big part of the story, though, eh? Yeah. And absent father syndrome, problem, is surely part of... A, a, it, it contributes largely to that problem it as does. well. Because that is the most common of the problems we have. It's, it does. You, you very quickly find people who... Will tell you, no, I was raised just by my mom mm. and aunts and so forth. Mm. And the father figure role is not one that's seen. I'm a perfect example of that. My, mm. my dad passed on when I was three. Mm. I have, and my mom never married. Mm. So I have no reference of a man in the house. That's just the life I've lived. Mm. When you said w men don't know how to love their women, 
And a minute earlier, we spoke about the kids see more than they hear when you've never seen it at all. How do you love? You've never seen this. Yeah. This movie never played in your neighborhood. And you're expected to remember the, the lines from it. And who taught you? Because mm. then you're raised in an environment where now you're a part of society at large. You're a grown man mm. who has never seen that hug. Kiss, holding hands. Holding hands. Sure, loving. Because sometimes it's a gift. It's them finding them dance in yes. the living room. Yes. And there are no references, zero references, because most kids are born in a households where one is missing. Mm. Whether missing from working in, as a migrant laborer in Johannesburg, yeah. or whether missing because he died, or he just didn't care, mm. or the mother didn't care and did not give him access to the child. Mm. Yo, <laughs> this is a big problem. It is. So that's that's the life you want to play. That's the role you want to play. Go yeah, to. and not only, I, I'm not saying I will be neglecting the girl child because also with mothers, there's a problem mm. in how you say things about the absent father mm. or the present father. Because that leaves the impression on the child, on the girl child. Yeah, I must tell you, listening to this, we have a, bad one here this is a bad deal we got going here <laughs> it's a this is not an overnight project it's not a it's not. Ten and ten and ten and ten and no it's yes. not it's not wow so what do you want to do physically with this we need to work with communities we need to work with social workers we need to work with schools yeah do, do you find that it'll be easier for a familiar face to address some of these issues I don't know mm. I don't know. But you lose what you have. I lose what I have. Yeah. I wish you well. Thank you so much. Call me once in a while. I will. Because uh, I don't have much experience, uh, but I'll tell you immediately that uh, I've been lucky. I haven't blessed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that I was raised by a mom who, in my opinion, did a decent job with me. Look at you. I think she did a decent job. Yeah. yeah. They were, you know, there's, there's always bumps. And it's not about what you have. It's about how you do it. Yes. Reaching out to those. You know, it's so important sometimes just to hug somebody. Yeah. Or just to say to somebody, you know, I love you. Mm, you know, I even felt it. You know, you're special. <laughs> yes. It means so much. Yeah. Because every time we open our mouths to some of these kids, it's venom. Mm. You are so bad. You are, we don't understand the pain. Yeah. We don't get to the root of the pain. We never ask. You asked such a simple question. What's wrong? Mm. Let's talk Let's about talk. it. Yeah. Mm. And those conversations are missing. They are missing. In the households, yeah. those conversations are missing. Mm. We coexist. Ratsena ratswa. Relevance TV samo. Rego kichini dijo di apeiwa. And we move on. Yeah. We never sit down and say, let's switch everything off. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Mm. Wow. And that's one thing that is good with the Jews. That's what they do from Fridays. That's why they have the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Because they switch the TV off, they switch the radio off, and the, the father sits with the family and he starts blessing the family and he starts asking, how was your week? Yes. What did you go through? Mm. Where are you emotionally, mentally, sure. physically? And sometimes all you need is just to talk about. Yes. What, that's all that matters. Mm. That conversation. Mm. We were studying a church. Now we're busy studying a, a mental host hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and mental illness is a real problem. Yeah. Because we have so many people who are mentally ill. We do not even recognize it. We don't even pick it up. And we just take things for granted that people are well. Mm. So just to say to a person, I care about you. Mm. I see. You are so quiet today. Why? What's going on? Yeah. Say something. Because we're very quick to say, uh, how is it? And I'm yeah. good. And we move on. Are you sure you're good? <laughs> Are you sure? Yes. Ever worked with uh, Dr. Patrick Chai? Yes, I worked with him when we were in Seoul City. Okay. But you know what? It was his journey. Yeah. We don't know what he was going through. Mm. Only he knows it was between him and his God. And may his soul rest in peace. We don't, we don't judge. Mm -mm. 
I I know I I don't judge people who end up the way he did. You don't know what they were going through. You don't know. Are we easy? No. Are we easy? You, and you'll never know. You'll never know. Are we easy? And sometimes the weight of the world can be so heavy that all you want to do is just switch off the machine and walk away. As sad as that that seems. Yeah. Because you don't know. Mm. Yeah. Because we we saw in the news someone who walked into a hospital. Yes. And just shot the nurse. So a wife, a wife, not just a nurse, a wife. Where are the kids? Yeah. So for you to get to that place, Ooh. how dark does it get? And you can imagine it was planned because the way the story reads, she had blue lights. It looked like there's something important called out and that's it. It's sad. Yeah. That's where we are as a nation. Yeah. Do you know, we, we've touched on so much and and I wonder what makes you angry. What is that thing? I can't stand people who lie. Yeah. It's, it's, do you find a lot of around your life? <laughs> I don't know because sometimes I just tend to overlook. Yes. You know? But I can't pick up like you are lying. Why, why do you have to lie? Mm. Yes. Because if you lie to me about something, you're defrauding me for that particular thing. Tell the truth so that I can give it to you with an open heart and with a blessing. Mm, mm. And make life easy for both yes. of us. Yeah. Because the truth shall set you free. Yeah. And if I find out what you're lying to me, it's going to be so painful to me. Yes, exactly. You know? and, and, and the truth always finds their way out. Mm. The truth doesn't, rather than the lies yeah. never want to be blocked in. Mm. They want the world to know. To what, see. Yes. That's how the devil is. Yeah. 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 And now the, the, the lies come out. Yes. I've covered two hours, 30 minutes. <laughs> really? Yes, we did. Very good. We can talk forever, I realize. <laughs> <laughs> I realize. I appreciate you and I think South Africans appreciate you equally. Thank you so much yeah. to my wonderful South Africans. Things will get better. Mm. We must just hold on to God. It's not easy, I know, for some of us. But you know what? God loves us. Yeah. He loves us. Do you think we are a special nation in some form? I say this because we always have something good going in this country, even if things are bad. I think it's because we are a praying country. Mm, mm. And, God, and God says, I shall never leave you nor forsake you. Yeah. You shall be blessed coming in, blessed going out. Wow. Yes. You're a blessing to us. You are amazing. For me, an absolute rock star. Uh, so like I said, when we started, you're described as a gift from God. Amen. <laughs> and I, so when, I, when I saw that, I was like, wow, what a beautiful way of describing, <laughs> <laughs> describing you. You're a gift from God. And I say, indeed you are. Continue taking over the world. May you play uh, the role of Winnie Mandela. I, I literally pass that to you. I receive it. <laughs> yes. May you play that role and many more roles yeah. uh, that define. And I think uh, the role you played with uh, with Poppy is a definition of how deserving you are as, as, a, as a South African actress. And may you be on a poster uh, somewhere in the US very, very soon. And then playing some important role that defines South Africa. Before COVID came, there was already a letter where we were supposed to go overseas for nominations mm. to be nominated and COVID hit and that was it. And I just said, God, only God knows why. Why? Yeah. On the estate, I was playing, like I'm playing Matsepo when she was going spiraling down drinking mm. and I was so angry saying to the producers guys why must we have matriarchs who are always going to the bottle as mm. black people mm. and the producers just said one word to me no she is a woman in pain and I just said to myself okay this is how I'm going to play it let them see the pain yeah. and not the alcohol yes because I'm already having a problem with our kids in the streets, holding bottles, mm. drinking in the street, no fear of anything, no self-respect. And that is so, so disturbing. Was it well received? Your, your of course. Yeah. Yes. And essentially you're saying, I will bring this character forth. Yes. Without the alcohol. Don't worry. She about. drank the alcohol, but yeah. I downplayed the alcohol. I brought the pain. The pain out. Yes. 
Eh, Marwaspana. Bueno. Ay, qué le buja. Marwaspana. You know, we, we, we don't take these things seriously. How there's so much that goes into the characters. Yeah. It's not just. No. There's a lot that goes into it. Yeah. We see it. Uh, and that's the beauty of, of, of great art. When you don't, we don't question or even think about what went behind it. It looks amazing. Mm. And that's it. Yes. And you're saying, wow. And that goes to the producer and the director and the sound guy where you're just sitting there and saying, that, that transported me to another world because mm. the artistry was so great. Yeah. Wow. I'm proud of you as a South African. I'm proud of you as a human. I'm proud of you as someone who believes in God. And I say to you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You, you give us hope. You make us believe that we can achieve a lot in our lives. And we are truly, truly appreciate that. Uh, in, 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 in simple language, you sing anger. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so in much. David. And we appreciate it. And thank you again for coming. Thank you so, so We much. always do a fist bump on this show. <laughs> may God continue to pour into your life. May thank He continue you. to give you the wisdom. And may He open bigger doors for you. Thank you very much. Thank I you. receive the biggest door ever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. That's our show. <laughs> we hang out with uh, Mac Clementine, Simani. Which, which, which do you do you prefer? I was clear me. Which Whatever. one? Whatever. No, but which one you find comfortable? There has to be one. I have a favorite name. My dad used to call me Dede. Every time I hear it, I get happy inside. Dede. Yeah. Mm. It's Nama makana pizza mama lo. Mama lo. So from people. Mamiki. Oh yeah. Mama lo. Okay. So so people who see me, Mama Clementine, ah. I don't I don't have a problem. Yeah. Because I remember one time I was asking myself, would you even greater older people than myself? They call me Mama. Mama. <laughs> and God said, I dress people. Yeah. And when you are dressed, people will respect you and see you for who you are. Who you are. Yes. People are starting to call me Brahm Deva, Brahm yeah. David. Yeah. For the longest time, I didn't want it. I still, a part of me doesn't want it because I, I, I still think I'm young. <laughs> so when they say Bra, it's like, why are you burdening me with that load? But you simplified it and I should just accept it and enjoy it because yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. You dressed for yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You're so not good. naked. No. Yes. And that's it. People will reflect what they see. Yes. The dress sense that yes, you have sir. on, the gown that you have. Yes, sir. Amazing. And when you simplified a lot of theories today. <laughs> Thank you very much. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Mama Lo. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Thank you. That was Love awesome. You. I enjoyed it. Thank you. I enjoyed it too. King King David Studio Podcast.